Welcome everyone to the Ultimate White Castle Showdown. I'm your host, GW, and today we're diving into a delicious debate around White Castle items, the epitome of fine cuisine. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get started. You really bring out my empathetic side, George. Shut up, bitch. Fuck your stupid intro, George. Ha! My powers just got activated. Look at me go. Whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Put a W in the comments for George. Shut the fuck up, Obama. You know my intros are fire. First up, the classic cheeseburger. JB, kick things off. Oh, it's a staple for a reason. Compact, cheesy goodness. But I fucking hate pickles. I mean, they're just so dang salty. They make my mouth sizzle with sharp pain. Gotta go, D tier. Incredibly stupid comment, Joe. Fuck yeah, come on bro, this slider basically eyes White Castle, you geriatric fuck. Agree on the staple status, but everything else out of your mouth was straight dog water. You can just remove the pickles, you dickhead. This chi burger has to go S tier. Yes, preach, Obama, mmm. For real, astonishing. It's the essence of White Castle. S tier, no doubt. No doubt, homie, S tire it goes. Now, what about the freaking hamburger slider? It's the foundation of fast food. This is what they pack the Crave case with, and it really lets you down a lot of these before the inevitable feeling of lethargic disgust. Too plain for me, B tier. It's all about the cheese, dog. Fuck this boring shit. Uh, Crave, case is good, but like, why eat frozen fast food? You really that gross, Obama? Fuck you. Haven't you heard the leaked voice tape, Joe? Obama is nastier than Stormy Daniels. Really? Damn, Donald, that freaky? Yep, absolutely. Look, just for the Crave case, you gotta go A tier. For some reason, this tastes better than uh, the cheeseburger one for me, guys. I, just, I gotta put this one into S tier. You, should, you, you taste the, the onions and the bun more, which are really the, the greatest part about a white castle slider. Fair enough, okay, man's came correct. Yeah, that makes sense. Great sweaty tiger balls. What? Dude, please, you're scaring the adults. If you want to go back to the zoo, maybe your real parents will claim you, all right? Shout out to Rodney Dangerfield. How about the filet of fish? Surprisingly good for a burger joint. It's panko fish, which is clearly inferior to McDonald's filet, but damn, this shit is dry, rubbery, and it's more like a fish stick sandwich, which Obama loves fish sticks, so I'm sure he'll rank this high. Well, uh, man, take it easy, asshole. If anyone likes fish dicks, I mean fish sticks. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Listen, yeah, I'd go put this in trash tier. It tastes rubbery and really fucked up for a fish sandwich. Shit, they don't even have good sauce to drizz on it. Gotta make everything sound gay, huh? Hey, what's wrong with that? Listen, there's nothing wrong with gay fish sticks, and that's what these white castle fish sticks are. Therefore, I must go C tier because I can't afford to offend a single person if I want to get re-elected. Now I know your strategy, it's all part of my plan. Point taking this fish sandwich blow is gonna throw it into the basura can. Next up, what do we think about the chicken slider? I'd go trash tier. I don't think it tastes like chicken. And there's a 50-50 shot. You get a rubber chicken, which is unfortunate. Joe with a surprisingly reasonable take. B tier for me, good, but it's not reaching cheeseburger heights. Agreed with JB about the Rubber chicken part, plus even when it's properly cooked, I can still only eat one of these, and that says a lot for me, so that pretty much says it all, folks. Fat hamster. Shut up, Obama. Okay, we'll throw this into D tier. I find it quite enjoyable, but get tired of it almost instantly. Spicing things up with the jalapeno cheese slider next. Now that's what I'm talking about. A tier for the kick it brings. It adds a new take on um, White Castle. That's with the times. Too spicy for my taste. C tier. Don't love it. I'm all about scalability, and I always end to be able to inhale my Jesus fast Donald, food. Get a grip. I'm disgusting. Uh, these sliders have the perfect spice level. A tier easily. It might even be better than the cheeseburger. Okay, I'm gonna throw these into B tier. I always enjoy them, but after one, I've had enough of the burn. Now the bacon cheeseburger. Any comments? It's bacon and cheese. What's not to love? A tier. Exactly, DT. A tier all the way. Pigs eat anything, including humans and rocks. Yummy. I love it. Yeah. Bacon woo. Bit too greasy for me. B tier. And Joe, when did you turn into a South Park character? His dementia didn't happen overnight, Obama. True that. Kind of makes me want to lower my ranking into B tier, you sick fuck. All right, enough of that. 
I'll be generous with this one and throw it into S tier because I also love bacon. Chicken rings, go. Unique and fun. Uh, like, who doesn't love meat pressed into cool shapes? I love these. A tier for being different. They're disgusting, dude. I definitely don't love when my meat is beat into different shapes, you gay boys. I have to agree with you there, Donald. These chicken rings are unrecognizable from regular uh, chicken fingers or tenders, and I'm going to have to go trash tier. What? Listen, you butthead. It's over. Don't pretend like Hawaiian pineapple looking chicken fingers with a uniform texture doesn't gross you out just a little bit. Next up, we have mozzarella sticks. Your verdict? Tear daddy. Destiest mozzarella sticks ever. I would also go S tier. Who the fuck knows what they put in this shit? Donald plus zesty must be an orange color. Cause fuck these off, sticks Obama. suck. Not hey, that's not real funny. Food, just a chemical concoction that passes what? FDA restrictions. Calm down, Donald. Fuck, bro. You're such a soft weenie. Look at his frail, lethargic ass. You think he knows any better? Hey. I will beat your ass. You and what Army Obama figures? You'd love to talk about beating asses, you broke back degenerate. These are going into S tier. If I don't want a burger, I'm going straight for these. And a smoothie. Sloppy Joe Slider, let's hear it. Messy but delicious, like not even sure what this is, but it actually fills me up. Love the flavor, but it's a bit too sloppy. Perfect for Trump and Stormy, though. Oh, you know it, Joe. This is a bit too much for me, guys. I don't really like it, but I'm not a sloppy Joe kind of guy. You a bitch. Nothing wrong with a sloppy Joe, bitch. It's a fun twist. B tier for creativity. All right, sloppy suspects. I'm going to throw this into C tier since you guys like it more than me. Enough of that, Nate. Shit. Now let's double down on the double cheese slider. Double the fun, double the flavor. S tier. It's a bit much. I'm going to go D tier. Too much bread. That's the first time I've heard you say you don't like buns. Oh, whoa, ha, 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 ha. That was hilarious. Oh, man, this one is going to have to go C tier, guys, who got to just be in the right mood for it. And it's not better than the singlet sliders. Belgian waffle sausage slider, rate it. Okay, George, no need to be such an asshole about it. Hey, I'll go first. Bein, bussin, whatever the kids say nowadays. Your waffle and syrup mix too strong. Breakfast perfection, not gonna lie. The sausage tastes pretty good, even better than McDonald's. That was a personal attack, Obama. Watch your mouth. No, it wasn't Trump, you're just enormous. Like a damn Thanksgiving Day parade balloon, these deserve S tier. It's good but not what I come to White Castle for. B tier from me, plus it's so small. Surprisingly tasty. A tier for me. Definitely don't think it deserves an S tier. That's horse shit Joe going side here hold. This L curly fries, what's the score on these? Can't go wrong with curly fries. Solid when you want to change it, but we all know who the real fry kings are. Shut the fuck up about McDonald's, bro. I mean, fuck every take. Seems to be about friggin' Mickey D's with you. These fries suck, bro. Gotta go D tier. Always too starchy. And it takes 10 minutes just to tear the little salt packets and get enough salt on them to make them taste right. They're good, but I prefer the onion rings. And with the mozzarella sticks there, these fries have to go trash tier. I know a lot of people who are dependent on fries with cheeseburgers are going to be up in arms. Yeah, well, you're going to be up in these fists in two seconds. Speaking of onion rings for you smelly breathed buffoons. Crispy and delicious. A tier. These are what I'm here for, S tier, no question. Straight heat, just like if your mama made it. They're good, but not S tier good. A tier Obama. Nonsense, these could even be better than mozzarella sticks. S tier easy. Now the milkshakes, your thoughts. Thick, creamy, and delicious. A tier. You sound so fucking gay. Obama, but yes, very thick. I quite like these. Gotta go S tier as it's the only ice cream on the menu. Classic milkshake action, but doesn't offer the same release as a milkshake from anywhere else. Really, half the time I can't suck it uh, and then my straw gets all fucked up. C tier. I'm gonna go B tier just for that fact. Thank you for bringing that up, Joseph. The straw always gets fucked up like it's consistently bad every time. Lastly, let's get into smoothies. Refreshing and lighter than the milkshakes. Pretty good, but definitely artificial tasting. D tier for fake news. You and your fake news. Look who's in the Oval Office right now, bitch boy. Settle down. Joe, he's not the only one who thinks the news is fake. Some things are definitely fake or overly exaggerated. Whatever gets the e-balls glued to the screen. What he's saying makes no sense. These smoothies are delicious. Agree with JB. They're good, real smooth and flavorful. They also last a long time. 
Unlike Donald with Melania. What? Screw you. Not my fault. Your wife wants me Trump. Get the fuck off the mic. These smoothies are trash. Nah, bro. They shouldn't go any lower than B tier. Very good smoothie action. Going a tier with these, they're quite delicious. There you have it, folks. Our contenders have spoken. Hello, my cartoon fanatics and superhero legends. Hit the like button. This is something I take very seriously. So let's get started with Spider-Man 1. What are your thoughts? Spider-Man 1 was groundbreaking. It set the tone for modern superhero movies. If this is your favorite Spider-Man movie, type one in the comments. This movie has been lauded for its significance in shaping the superhero film genre. And I can't go anything other than S tier. Special effects were good for its time too. Still holds up to this day. It had a great balance of action, character development, and humor. Not gonna lie, this is the one thing we can all agree on. This movie and this weeby superhero novella go straight into S tier. Fuck J.K. Rowling. Spider-Man 1 gets an S tier, a solid foundation for the Spider-Man series. Although the Green Goblin looked way too poor. Next, Spider-Man 2. Your views? Spider-Man 2 built on the first movie's success brilliantly. I never for a second had to scratch my head in contemplation. I definitely don't believe that you old fuck. Every video of you I see is just you scratching your head everywhere usually running away from all of your responsibilities. The villain, Dr. Octopus, was well-developed and memorable. Just the name, too, uh, is pretty epic. Um, but, Joe, the plot really trailed off at multiple points in the movie. This is the one thing you don't scratch your head about. Do you still wear Spider-Man underwear? You betcha. I don't see anything wrong with that. The storyline was deeper, exploring Peter Parker's struggles more. I never understood why people say that. Like, do you remember Peter's struggles in the first movie? He cried so hard he shit himself. Spider-Man 2 scores an A-deer. The theme of power as a curse and superheroism as a stoic moral obligation shows a level of sophistication and relevancy during current times. Your opinions on Spider-Man 3? They really started to fuck with Peter in this one ruined his entire foundation and identity. That was so brilliantly delivered in the first two movies. Uh, I love Venom, though, so I'd go C tier. The introduction of Venom was a highlight for sure, and the visual effects were great, but that's the only thing I liked about it. Trash Tier. It hurts my soul to hear you say such bad things about Spider-Man Donald. Wah, wah, get over it, George, you big baby. Shut the fuck up, Joe, you old fart. There were too many storylines, which made it less cohesive. Special effects were top-notch, though. Just an overstuffed plot line. Spider-Man 3 was a bit of a fuck up in my opinion. Nothing about the Venom character appealed to me. Nothing about the storyline appealed to me, but the visual effects were pretty cool. I hate sacrificing creativity for fancy bullshit though. And so I'm gonna have to throw this into D tier. How about The Amazing Spider-Man? Let's be real, this is where you start to see the quality of Spider-Man movies go downhill. One thing that was really great to see though, was Peter Parker's intelligent, nerdy side came back. That's the Peter we all know and love. Almost teared up for a second Trump. Fuck you, Biden! There were no interesting villains. Really, no new concepts, ideas. This movie was too emotional. I hated every second of it. The focus on Peter's backstory was interesting. It didn't quite capture the magic of the original series, I'll agree with you. The Amazing Spider-Man gets a trash tier, guys. We all know this wasn't their best work. We all have bad days. Now let's discuss the Amazing Spider-Man 2. This sequel tried to do too much and felt disjointed. You would know what that feels like, wouldn't you, Joe? Quiet Obama, he has a point. I wasn't too fond of the love scenes and the intimate tone of this one. Garfield had a different vibe. Not better, not worse, just different. It really put things into perspective and how Spider-Man can never be beaten. It had potential, but ultimately fell short of expectations. Quiet, Joe. What the fuck do you mean? Just what he said, you oversized toddler, this movie sucks. It wasn't that bad, it had such repetitive action scenes though. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 scores a D tier, I can't bear to put this one lower than that. Next we have Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse was a game changer with its unique animation style. The chat bubbles were pretty cool and made it seem more interactive, I liked it. I would maybe go S tier. Really? That shit just confused me and made me sleepy. Not surprised. Well, the story was innovative, but now I just see the multiverse as a very real thing, and it scares the shit out of me. Mariso, because Joe is the president, and I can't do anything about it. It feels so good to hear you say that. Humor, action, and emotional depth were perfectly balanced. I'd give it an S tier. Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse gets an S tier from me. It had the action that the older films had, but with new age concepts. What about Spider-Man? 
Homecoming. Such a dumb name for a Spider-Man movie. Tom Holland's portrayal of a younger Peter Parker was spot on. The villain, Vulture, was well written and acted. Plus, Peter Parker being extra nerdy resonated so well with me. It captured the essence of Spider-Man as a friendly neighborhood superhero. The nerdiness and the great Cody-like graphics made the film, in my opinion. Spider-Man, Homecoming earns an A tier, but a high one. Your thoughts on Spider-Man Strikes Back? This was the OG Spider-Man, guys, and it was so much different. Hilariousness, low-budget humor, and light-hearted action. Kapow, Biden blast. Joe should have been in that movie. He's so underwhelmingly low-budget and has such a crazy delivery that it makes sense. S-tier for the film, though, although it was a different time. The storytelling and effects are from a different era of superhero media, one where human decency still existed. Spider-Man was just a guy, not some wildly powerful superhuman hybrid. It's more of a nostalgic piece than a standout Spider-Man movie, though. I go B tier. Spider-Man Strikes Back scores an S tier. Joe, fuck you. Its one-liners and action-packed dialogue is the same genius that drives the growth of our AI president videos. Lastly, Spider-Man. Across the Spider-Verse. Your views. This shit was creepy as hell, albeit a great movie with tons of visual eye candy. Where did you see Crossdresser? Hello, all, welcome back. I know you all missed your favorite moderator. I mean, the comments definitely didn't say that, but I know you guys missed me. Like and subscribe, you know the drill fam. Let's start with Rigatoni. What are your thoughts? Rigatoni is great for holding onto sauces with its ridges and large size. The pure functionality of the Rigatone alone should be enough for S tier. You guys rock, and that if you make Bolognese with a different type of pasta, you're leaving about 50% of your sauce profits onto the table. Criminal. Love the rigatoni, mostly because it has the name Tony in Sometimes it. Sometimes it can be too bulky, depending on the dish. Joe, you really make some stupid comments. I'd give it an S tier, though, because I love the thickness. It's a solid choice for robust, flavorful meals. Or in Obama's case, robust, flavorful dick. Shut the hell up, Joe. That was uncalled for. Joe with a rare W. I'm throwing rigatoni into S tier right off the bat. Shit slaps and helps soak up all the sauce. Like when I eat other types of pasta, all the sauce gets left behind. Okay. What do we think about tortellini? Tortellini is the same thing as ravioli. It's just smaller, which makes me like it even less appealing in my eyes. Everything is about size with you, Obama. Wonder why? Fuck you. Trump stay in your own lane. It's perfect for soups or served with a light sauce. It also sounds a lot better, and the ratio of noodle to filling is much better in my eyes. Gotta go S tier for tortellini. It excites me more than any other pasta on the menu. Something excites Joe. There are so many types, colors, and different fillings. It's so fun just trying the different varieties. It's very delightful. I can even sympathize with Joe on this one. Totolini scores an A tier. It doesn't have as much filling or substance as a regular ravioli, but still tastes similar and has a great dynamic. Mm. Also much more variety with these. Now what about boti pasta? Oh wow, these are so fun. Bow ties. It's always something stupid with you, Joe. Can't you ever take these lists seriously? Usually, women always say this is their favorite pasta, um, but doesn't the extremely thin point in the middle where the two sides meet piss anyone else off? Like angers them, Trim and Gowsley? It's playful and works well in a variety of dishes. That's all I was saying. Well, I think this pasta is quite classy, but lacks substance. Who thought of Melania right there? I definitely did. Keep my wife's name out of your slanted mouth, Joe. Please stop trying to act tough, Donald. Boti pasta is for women and noobs. True peas on no. Bow tie pasta is solid, B tier at least. Bow tie earns a C tier. Jesus Christ. Mostly because I really resonated with Obama's comment about the thin part in the middle. It ruins the whole texture in my opinion. Okay, now what about orzo? Orzo is small and rice-like, great in soups, or as a side dish. Orzo salad always slaps. It's versatile, but can be overshadowed by other ingredients due to its size. Bro, for real, you do always mention the size. It seems weird now. You seem weird, Joe. Everything you say and do makes people just go, what the fuck? Valid point, actually, Obama. Orzo gets the job done, but it's not exactly pasta, is it? It's like if pasta and cereal were combined into one. Funny you would compare this to an illegitimate child, Trump. I'll think about all your kids next time I eat some Orzo. Bro, shit. Much, much scarier than you meant it to be. Listen, all I'm saying is that the Orzo is very much similar to cereal and children. I eat them and there are a lot of pieces involved. You are the sickest fucking president in the history of presidents. Shame. So yeah, it cooks quickly, which is convenient for fast meals. I'd give it an S tier. Orzo gets a B tier from me. It tastes great and has all the makings of a superior pasta, but it isn't a true pasta. Now, what do we think about Penny? Penny is a classic. Shut your mouth, Joe. I can't listen to any more of this shit. Penny soaks up a good amount of sauce and can be made with anything. 
too thin for me. Come on, man. I can't be the one hearing things this time. You're not hearing things, Joe. Sigmund Freud lives in Obama's head rent-free. Thank God I thought I was having Coke withdrawals again. I'd give Penny an A tier because even without any sauce, it tastes great. Without any sauce? Who the hell eats pasta without sauce, Joe? It's also great in baked pasta dishes. Please, Joe, enough. You have the most boring takes. Penne is going C tier. Jesus Christ. I like Christ. how it soaks up some sauce, but it's nothing special. Plus, if you overcook it, it becomes way too fucking floppy. Opinions on fettuccine? Fettuccine is ideal for creamy sauces. It's flat and thick shape, pairs well with Where are them. these voices coming from? Obama, you're really really starting to bother me with these closet gay comments. Joe with two W's in one video. How can this be happening? Depends who you ask, dog, anyway. I love fettuccine. It's so easy to swivel around your fork. Swivel around that dick, you mean? Without fettuccine, Alfredo, y'all would never appreciate what good food tastes like. Gotta go S tier for this one. It can get clumpy if not cooked properly. I'm going B tier. Okay, now I know that didn't just sound gay to me. I'd give it a solid A tier. Fettuccine gets an A tier from me. If you have a creamy sauce, it goes well. Otherwise, the shit is ineffective. What about linguine? Linguine is similar to spaghetti, but flatter. Shut up, nerd. It's bigger than regular pasta, and therefore Give better. me a break. No, no, he has a point this time. It's thicker than regular spaghetti and angel hair, and makes more surface area to scoop up the sauce. Linguine deserves an S tier. It's excellent with seafood dishes. Spaghetti and marinara, bolognese, Alfredo, alla vodka. To be honest, linguine is just pasta, but better. Gotta go S tier, praise God. Your thoughts on Papadel? Way too thin, bro. Like, it always gets me so excited looking at the sheer size of it, but then when I put it in my mouth, it's too hard to take. Its wide surface area makes it great for absorbing flavors, though. Uh, George, are you hearing this? It's not as common as other types, but stands out in the dishes it's used in. I, for one, enjoy Papadel when it has some clumpier elements like crab and mushrooms thrown Falls in. Falls apart way too easily, though. I don't Papadel like that. Papadel is getting a D tier from me, guys. I don't really see the appeal. It's too weak to be used in lasagna and is pretty much a beta male version of pasta. If I were to describe it in three words. How about the spaghetti? beta male of pasta? You sound like such a prick. Never thought of it like that, but 100% on point. Spaghetti is a classic. Although why it doesn't have as much soul as any of the other pastas and leaves, you feeling a bit light sometimes. Spaghetti is the quintessential pasta. It's the base of many classic dishes. Joe, think about that before stating your delusional criticisms. He has a point, actually, Barry. You fuck, Todd. Why eat spaghetti when you have so many other great pastas available at your disposal? I'm leaning towards trash deer, actually. It's versatile and universally loved. I don't think that's fair. Plain, common, and stupid looking. Just like you, you mean? That was cold, bro. I like you, Joe. Go sing Kumbaya somewhere else. Spaghetti is going C tier because I can't possibly disrespect the OG. Now let's talk about gnocchi. Gnocchi is unique with its potato base. I mean, whoever thought of this is a legend. Not sure I agree with you about the potato base, but it works well with light and dark sauces. So does your wife. What about pasta has turned you all into savages this evening? Something about the term pasta just makes me go bananas. Uh, I'd say this isn't a topic for the faint of heart, but Nochi deserves A tier, in my opinion. It brings a comforting and satisfying texture to meals. Enough with this mumbo jumbo, George. The potato filling makes it taste nothing like pasta. Trash tier. Nochi scores a B tier from me, comforting and versatile, with a unique texture. What about lasagna? If you've ever been to Italy, you know just how important this noodle is, Feeds bro. a crowd and leaves people in amazement of the famous lasagna noodle. Its ridges rival the beauty of the Everglades, the Rocky Mountains, and Mount Olympus. Every time I look at a lasagna noodle, I am drawn to. You gotta to. put it in the top spot, man. Think about how dumb it would be if it went into A tier. Lasagna is going into A tier. Jesus Christ. What the heck, man? It's great in lasagna, but what the fuck else are we using it for? You can't really do much with it, bro. Opinions on rotini? Nothing pisses me off more than this. Have you guys ever successfully speared one of these? It always either slides away or plops into my sauce before I can get it in there. That explains all the stains on your shirt at the last press conference, Joe. Is that what you slip on when you fall down the stairs, it's too? It's fun and works well in pasta salads. I'd go B tier. In all honesty, it is insanely frustrating to eat this. You would have to overcook it just to be able to spear it with your fork. It's also very airy, like I don't want to eat spirals, dog. It's not as traditional, but offers a playful twist to dishes. Trash tier for Rotini and for that terrible pun. Lastly, angel hair. Your views? So delicate, and I honestly like this better than spaghetti. You're a bitch, George. Let's be honest, sometimes it makes sense to go with the thinner noodle, right, Obama? Never. Size till I die. 
Fucking hell, someone put a kennel on this rabid dog. It's a good choice for simple, quick meals, but then you gotta realize ramen's gonna be easier every time. D tier. As soon as you put it in the pot, it gets overcooked. This shit is for pussies, trashed here. It pairs well with subtle flavors that don't overpower it, like lighter sauces and certain combinations. Angel hair is getting a D tier from me. It's too small, and I hate the gushy sound it makes when you stuff your face with it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Tell me what you liked or didn't like in the comments below. Don't be a bitch. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I thought I'd let everyone have a look at what's going on inside my brain today. Let's start with sheep. Share your thoughts. If this is exactly what you thought Joe's brain sounded like, hit that like button and comment a dinosaur emoji in the comments. They're relatively easy to manage and tend to be docile. I mean, you're like the king of sheep, Joe. Why do you need us for this one? Just thought I would let everyone share their love for the precious fluffy sheep that roam about. Even in Minecraft land, sheep are pretty awesome. Sheep require regular shearing, which is a bit labor intensive though, and the fluff gets dirty. Wouldn't you agree? As the only one here who has raised actual sheep, yes, they get incredibly dirty and give you diseases if you're not careful. It's also very rough material to utilize through production of textilis. However, they will really keep you warm and well-fed in the winter. They're also good grazers and can help with pasture management. Nothing like charging at a mother trucker with a horde of sheep. Sheep get an S tier. They're so cute and do whatever they're told. Such good little supportive fluffies. Next, pigs. Your views? Pigs are intelligent and can be used for both pork and lard, so plenty of self-sufficiency points there. However, as an animal, I find them repulsive when not in piglet form. It will literally eat and roll around in anything once its balls drop. Trashed here. Same thing that happened to you, Donald. Huh. Got him. Oh, kiss my ass, George. They can be a bit challenging to handle due to their sheer size. But I'd go S tier because piglets are cuter than puppies, in my opinion, and much easier to train. Pigs are efficient converters of feed into meat, but just make sure you aren't feeding it plastic. Pigs score a C tier. I really can't understand why they eat hard rocks and plastic and roll around in shit-feeling surfaces. Your opinions on cows? Cows are essential for dairy and beef production. The term cash cow really means something, you know. Yes, they're the money makers. But have you ever taken care of one? They take a lot of food and time. Plus, a lot of them smell terrible. Yes, and they live for many years, almost as long as Joe. Suck a dick, Trump. Stupid and smelly B tier. They need regular care and veterinary checks, too, and if that milk comes out wrong, it's game over for your family. But in Minecraft CM on, the cow is essential for leather and advancing into many different parts Cows of the Cows are game. getting an A tier from me. Fuck you, you Trump, you cow discriminator. Next. How about goats? Goats are versatile for milk, meat, and even fiber. Shitty milk, shitty meat, and shitty fiber. You mean? I'd rather eat squirrels. Goats can be escape artists, which makes fencing them a challenge too. They seem very evil. They're great for controlling brush and weeds though, and if you don't like the produce, then just sell it to some hippie motherfucker. Goats are getting a trash tier. I mean, they hold the most value being sacrificed. Let's be real. Next, let's discuss chickens. Ah yes, the starter animal for new ranchers and farmers. Having personal eggs is a game changer, especially if you love bacon, egg and cheeses as much as Fat Boy Donald. Stop, Barry. You know you love that shit, too. Okay, who am I kidding? Yeah, love that shit. Someone feed me right now. They don't need much space, except the more of them you raise, the worse it smells and looks. Your senses will hate you, and your environment will become so unsanitary that it makes you question the point of even being alive. That being said, it's all worth it. Uh, once that big mama poops an egg out. Chickens can be prone to health issues and predators, though. Uh, they shit everywhere, and that's definitely a hazard. No, it's great fertilizer for my plants, dog. How you think I bred that Joe Biden Zazoblast? Fino. Chickens score a modest A tier. Low maintenance with multiple benefits. Opinions on horses? The best animal that there is, I don't care what they say about dogs. This is the most loyal animal. Then why do people get killed when horses kick them, bro. Probably because they were doing something they shouldn't have done, Joe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tried to hop on a wild horse once, but I was too fat and slid off. Uh, and then he kicked me in disgust, making my sternum explode into 1,000 pieces. But then the CIA just gave me a special serum, and my chest became as hard as Dwayne The Rock Johnson's like it is now. Shit that never happened for 200. They require significant care, training, and space. 
Plus, they don't make you any money unless you win at Belmont or something. I'd go B tier just because they seem very, very stupid and smell like shit. Joe basically has the spirit of a cow. The cost of keeping a horse can be quite high. Horses get a B tier. Wonderful animals, but a bit pricey and dangerous. What about lambs? Better than sheep? In my opinion, their wool is a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. They're generally easier to handle due to their size. Unless you're Obama, then it would probably be a challenge. Suck my ass, bro. I can bench 135. Lamb Wimp. is so tasty, too. Like, it really has the richest meat flavor without the game flavor. Quiet. Now the lamb are interesting creatures. And they make noise, but not too loud or shrill. It's actually quite soothing. I'd go S tier. They can be profitable, especially in niche markets, too. Also an S tier Lambs for me. Lambs are an S tier for me. What do you guys think about turkeys? Turkeys are primarily raised for meat, but I really love the sounds they make and their overall energy. They really they crack me up. And can be profitable around holidays. And it makes sense that you'd like their vibe, Trump. That's crazy. Turkeys are sexy dog, I can't lie. Their plumes are very attractive. Yeah, I have to agree. It looks quite beautiful, especially in natural Joe, pause. Style. This is really very odd, Joe. How do you make everything so awkward? Uh, yeah, so turkeys score a B tier, probably the best tasting meat and fun to hunt for in the fall. Anyway, gotta go, bye. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Comment what you liked or didn't like below. Don't be scared. Welcome, men. Today, I got you with a sick musical instrument tier list, as suggested by a subscriber. It also turned out to be the longest video ever. Type your video ideas in the comments below. Stop shilling, dog. Nah, no, bro, let him cook. Okay, bro, what do we think about the guitar? S tier, that's no question. All right, fine, that's a definite S tier. Now, to go off of that, what do we think about the tuba? Absolute trash tier, dog seam on now. Fair enough, dumpy dumps. Now, a different type of hard brass, the trumpet. I was a trumpet player in elementary school. You were homeschooled. Barry, shut the hell up, you might have played checkers. Stop making me sound like some sort of fraud, Trump. Trumpet sounds pretty blaring and confident. Not gonna lie, Mac Miller has some fire trumpet on his raps. And I think they add a little pizzazz, so I'm gonna S tier for pizzazz. The trumpet stands out in jazz, classical, and even pop music. A tier for me. It's loud and can really command attention in a performance, but I can only take too much of it at once. I go C tier. It's small and portable, which is convenient and uh, really packs a great bass and supplement to any melody, I'd go S tier. Playing the trumpet requires a lot of breath control skill, timing, and a well-maintained machine. Mad respect to my trumpet players. You biased, motherfucker. Trumpet earns an A tier. It really has quite a lot of soul and is very fun to play. Next, your thoughts on the clarinet. The clarinet has a wide range and can play very intricate melodies. Plus, Squidward. Squiddy Boy is a great sell for the clarinet. Don't be a child. Okay, okay, uh, the clarinet is quite nice and melodic, but I find it quite terrible. When was the last time that you said, damn, I really love that one clarinet song? The sound is smooth and can be both subtle and dynamic. I'd give it a B tier. Clarinet is for sausage destroyers, prove me wrong. Clarinet has a bit of a sausage destroyer vibe. Okay, Donald, I'm gonna go D tier. Let's discuss the flute. The flute has a beautiful light sound and in Zelda games, sounds exceptional. It's used a lot in classical music, but when the hell is clarinet used? Otherwise, we see some five of Zelda games. Flutes are small and easy to carry around, though, and I know a lot of bad shoddies who blow a mean flute. Michelle isn't exactly a shoddy. Chill, bro, shut your mouth. She watches these. He watches these. All right, settle down, boys, quiet. Flute is getting a C tier. It's cute for a second, but then unbearably shrill. Opinions on drums? Drums are the backbone of all music. Definitely good at taking your frustrations out on Democrats, the government, Hillary's assassins, the border, the loss of American jobs, the crazy inflation, the drastic radical policies, and the- Relax, bro, lighten the fuck up, you deranged, looney tune, looking ass. Drums are S tier, bro. Travis Barker makes me feel a crazy type of way. They're very versatile and used in almost every genre, but what can you really do without them? Drums can be too loud for my eardrums, actually. Shut the fuck Ow. up, Joe. Extremely hard to play the drums, too. You must be in tune with every limb and every second of every song, too. Drums get an S tier. What about the violin? The violin can convey a broad range of emotions, very slept on by the general population. It's central to classical music and nothing sings to the soul more. A sound bite on loop of Joe saying, come on, man, speaks more to my soul. Takes a lot of skill to shred a violin. 
make it sound like a sonata or a mythical tale between your ears stirring the imagination. The sound is very expressive and can be both powerful and delicate. I'd say go S tier or you really don't appreciate real music. Violin earns an S tier, a powerhouse that can be its own band. Your thoughts on the harp? Harp, isn't that when you lay pipe down on a thick shoddy? It's mostly used in classical music, Joe, you savage. Harps are large and not portable. Also, where and how do you even obtain one and learn to play it? I guess anywhere, fuck it. Looks like TikTok has one for $35. Playing the harp involves intricate finger work and coordination. Many times a mermaid has seduced me with intricate harp melodies. It deserves at least an A tier. Harp scores a C tier. I've only heard them about three times in my life, and most likely because they get boring. How about the piano? The piano is extremely versatile and always sounds so beautiful. Pure tones, keys, and octaves, and a staple. If you want to learn any instrument or tempo, rhythms, or tones. It has a wide range and can play both melody and harmony in different octaves. Very impressive. Also looks amazing and affluent. Just my type, really. I'm going to go S tier. The piano can be both a solo and accompanying instrument. I'm beautiful and poetic. Got to go S tier. Let's talk about the banjo. Uh, the banjo has a distinct sound, often associated with folk and country music. That good old twang. Joe, that's what it sounds like when you open your mouth sometimes. Banjos are light and portable, and oh yeah, you also have terrible dysfunctional mouth poops. Trump. Playing the banjo involves a specific finger-picking technique, very impressive and upbeat. I'll go B tier, though, since it's basically a whack guitar. Banjo scores a C tier. Guitar wannabe. What about the harmonica? The harmonica is great. I mean, it really makes Billy Joel's songs amazing, no? Tell me you don't love Lil Mosey's song, Pull Up 2. Who knew trap star raps would flow so damn breezy with the harmonica melody? Word, homie, go check it out. Anyway, this is a D tire, bro. Uh, it sounds so annoying in real life. Like after a few minutes, it just sounds like screeching bats. Wait, throw it into trash tier, actually. Its sound is unique, but that makes it very one dimensional. Plus, I don't know any harmonica songs, bro. I'm an Island boy. It allows for expressive playing, especially in blues. Harmonica earns a trash tier. Lastly, the ukulele. Your views? The ukulele is great for beginners and has a cheerful sound. Nothing like that island boy tune just makes you want to relax and be happy. Even with the weight of 10,000 Big Macs and the IRS weighing on top of your shoulders. So portable and fun sounding. Plus, it's a huge flex. Like you can just pull out a little guitar and start vibing epic always reminds me of Epstein's Island. Whoa! Don't talk about that, Joe. Bro, shit! Shut the fuck up, Joe! All right, I'm throwing this into A tier. Now I'll see y'all later. Who wants ice cream? It's What's up, gang? Nothing much, George. Just playing the new hardcore modes in Call of Duty. Uh, have you played recently? Uh I love the Warzone. Type your Discord in the comments if you want to play COD. So far, I can't even, bro. All right, dorks, let's get into the tier list now. We're ranking Fanta flavors. And I'm starting this list off with Fanta Grape. Uh, Fanta Grape has a strong and sweet flavor. It's quite distinctive, uh, but grape-flavored drinks aren't really my thing. I'm more of a Diet Coke all day type of person. It's popular among those who enjoy a bold fruit taste in their soda, but I don't drink soda. It reacts badly with the booger sugar I consume. Um, am I the only one who's gonna say this flavor is awesome? You're really gonna make me feel weird like that now? It's a classic flavor and often a go-to choice in the grape soda category. I'm with you there, Barry, but I just said, I don't like fucking grape soda, okay? Cool it. Jesus Christ, calm down, Donald, sheesh. Fanta grape gets a B tier. It's definitely top three of grape sodas, though. What about Fanta orange? Fanta orange is always solid when you have nothing else on deck. I'd give it an A tier just because I really enjoy citrus in my soda. I really enjoy citrus in my soda. Such a dweeb, Obama. Okay, so this soda blows, it always gives me heartburn. It makes my teeth feel like they're going to fall out. I like citrus in my soda too, but this feels like Tesla battery acid. It's versatile and pairs well with a variety of foods. I just think you're a fragile old man. It's one of the flagship flavors of Fanta. 
and widely recognized, but Joe has a point. It does kind of fuck up my entire mouth. Fanta Orange scores a C tier. Nothing crazy. Now Fanta Pineapple is next, and it's clearly amazing. No other pineapple soda comes close, not even Jarritos. Qué rico. Uh, chico, tú tengas una problema, porque eh, if tienes un problema, hay cuando tú hablas qué es la problema, qué cosa. No puse. Fanta Pineapple has a tropical flavor. Tastes more like real pineapple on God. It's weird because I don't think it's made with fresh pineapples. Melania and I drink dull pineapple juice. It's the only real pineapple juice in my opinion, but this soda is amazing. It's so great with McDonald's or any food really as an amazing flavor. Got a ghost here. Goaded. Yeah, George, you're right, dog. S tier it goes, gentlemen. How about Fanta Lemon? Way too zesty. Your mom is way too zesty. Joe, do I even have to tell you why? That is so fucked it up. Mayas loves lemon Fanta, I don't know, but it just tastes like great lemonade without all the sweetness. You're a soft ass bitch. Hey. Fanta Lemon is getting a C tier. I can't figure out why I let that discussion go on for as long as it even did. Let's discuss Fanta Strawberry. Fanta Strawberry has a sweet and fruity flavor, very much like strawberries. Wow, that was stupid, Obama, even for me. Like, that could have been the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my lifetime. The sweetness might be too much for some people, like myself. For some reason, it seems a bit mismatched, strawberry and soda. It seems like the best strawberry soda, though. It's a popular choice among berry soda lovers, but that ain't really me. I'd give it a C tier. There are so many better flavors. Fanta Strawberry scores a B tier. Opinions on Fanta Peach? Oh yeah, baby, that's that sweet, fruity flavor I need. Very creamy at times, too. It's not as common as some other flavors, but it's a pleasant surprise, and I wish they had it in my grocery store. Do you know what Uber Eats is, you dumbass? I swear Joe is like the human version of Patrick Starr. Shit slaps, throw it into S tier as one of the greatest. Going into AS tier, gentlemen. What about Fanta lychee? So exotic and tastes much better than actual lychee. Oh, this is refreshing and definitely one of the better flavors. I, I can't believe it's not more popular, but it is what it is. Listen, I think it's played out. When did all this lychee shit even exist? I still can't even figure out what it tastes like and if I like it or not. It's quite distinct and offers a different taste compared to more traditional flavors. Maybe your bland ass. Palati can't decipher the taste of food being placed on your deed taster buds. Too exotic for Donald Trump, it seems. What? No, 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 no. It's a great choice for those who enjoy Asian fruit flavors. Joe, really, on that note, I'm going B tier. Although I don't understand it, people seem to like it. Your thoughts on Fanta Mango? Goated man, it's like just as good as mango nectar, but without the 10,000 grams of sugar. It captures the essence of mango, well, I must say, mango soda slaps, and I'd award this hero an S tier. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It might be a bit too sweet for those who prefer more subtle flavors. Shut the hell up, Joe more subtle flavors. Fanta Mango gets an S tier. Joey makes sure those taste buds are still working, okay? How about Fanta Strawberry and Kiwi? Love it. The mix is so nice. Really? I kind of hate it. Nah, bro. It's better than the strawberry. You gotta go at least A tier. Yeah, man, this is pretty tasty and refreshing. I'd go B tier, though. Okay, I'll give it a B tier then. Strawberry Kiwi. Soda just sounds whack, like I'm drinking Capri Sun instead, bro. Nah. Lastly, Fanta Fruit Punch. Your views? Goated Fruit Punch. Don't tell me you've never downed a whole 12 pack of these at one of your friend's block parties before. Oh man, I gotta order some from Amazon right now. For once, I actually agree with you. Shit is a slapper on I wish I could rank the cotton candy flavor, but I can never actually find it in stores. Me either, but I'm sure that flavor is goaded. All right, going S tier with this one. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all next time. Welcome to the Great Rice Debate. It's funny because I just realized yesterday how many different types of rice there are. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to rank little fucking flavorless pellets of solidified mush. Hey, Joe, can you not ruin the video already? I was thinking about that, too. There are a lot of different types of rice, and they all taste different. The subscribers wanted JFK, though. 
Like the video if you love JFK voiceovers. Just shut the fuck up or we'll replace you with Kim Jong-un. We're also thinking about Sean Strickland. Let us know which one is your favorite out of those three in the comments. First up, brown rice, JB. It's hearty and nutritious, but a bit too chewy for my taste. I'll give it a B tier. I appreciate its health benefits and nutty flavor. A tier for me, but Joe has a point if they overcook it, it can get way too thick. Then it turns into an almost oatmeal-like consistency. Gotta go D tier. When I think of rice, I think of lighter, complimentary carbs. It's versatile, but lacks the refinement of other varieties B tier for me. Although it's the highest quality rice in terms of nutrients, but Obama is a stick, so. Why would he know that? Hey, ha ha ha, shut the fuck up, George. I'll give it a C tier. Maybe it's good if you're gay enough to bodybuild or actually care about the small difference the type of rice you eat makes to your physique. Anyway, moving on to white rice. DT, your thoughts? I'll be on your ass like white on rice in this next election, Joe. You better be prepared for war. Agreed. You're very gay and would probably love to hop on my sexy ass. I was voted most sexiest president in the whole wide world in Time Magazine last year. Cap. Stop the cap, bro. If you think I am going to sit here like you think I'm stupid, you're sadly mistaken, my very, very old acquaintance. It's staple for a reason, but I'm looking for more flavor, A tier. If it gets hard too, then it just becomes a pain to scrape off the plate. Didn't know we were in a bitchin' mood today, George. Keep your negative pussy ass comments to yourself next time. Gotta always keep it positive, George. I'm gonna give white rice a B tier. It has its flaws for being the most common mass-produced rice, but it soaks UO flavors and sauces very well. Next, wild rice. Ooh, wild rice. Yes, sometimes I'll see these in the forests or in pig feeds. And why are you looking at pig feed, Joe? Sometimes I wonder if it tastes good. Bro, Joe, this is not a therapy session. Keep quiet with those delusional statements. Just being myself, man, fuck you. It's unique and has a nice proportion of oil and spices that adds a sort of savory flavor. Goes great with fish, I'd go A tier. It's a bit too wild for my palate. C tier, rocks taste so much better. I love its texture and taste in healthy bowls. And when I go to Cava, which is owned by McDonald's, of course, or why else would I be there? Gonna go steer. I'm gonna throw this into B tier. It's good with certain things like salads and Michelle's gross vegan dishes, but not so much with meat. Egg fried rice, folks. JB, is this one too wild for you too? Delicious, versatile, a perfect comfort food. S tier, no doubt. It's just rice fried in eggs. Why would that bother me? It's flavorful and comforting makes it feel like I'm really getting the most protein and bang for my buck. A steer. Eggs? Fried? You're speaking my language. It's a staple in my kitchen, A tier for sure. Okay, sure, Ellis, I'll go A tier there. Um, it's nice as a standalone snack or with a full plate of food. Uh, thoughts on saffron rice? It's luxurious, aromatic. The saffron makes it special, but it's yellow and is a bit too much with most main courses. The flavor is good, but it's a bit too fancy for every day. I agree. Plus, it, it's too spicy. I, I, I. Saffron brings a unique taste and color. A tier for its elegance in my eyes. Just kidding. This shit deserves trash tier. Who the fuck has saffron rice with those good old ribs, chicken or otherwise? I'm also not a fan of this stupidly outrageous colored rice. Um, only foes good with like baked chicken. Um, and that's it. Gonna go D tier for this one, guys. Let's talk basmati rice. Ooh, yes, this is the rice that I like. Looks beautiful, I might add. You're clearly just supporting the rice because it's orange. Was thinking the same thing. Well, it does look pretty sexy. I agree, it's aromatic, long grain, perfect for so many dishes, S tier. I could look at those nutrient rich who is all day. Great that it's light, fluffy, and man does this shit slap with halal. Fuck orange stuff though, S tier. No doubt, it's the king of rice. S tier. All right, you hooligans, you know I can't argue with those facts. No kizzy. Next up, Jasmine Rice, your ratings? Its fragrance and soft texture are unbeatable. Gotta go trash tier. You really had me going there for a second. Why do you enjoy making absolutely no sense all the time? You really piss me off, Joe? Cry me a river. Obama, you got played. So what, you don't know everything? Yes, I do. Listen, this rice is basic and blander than the soles of my sun-dried feet. E! George, whoa now. This shit is very bland, but sometimes that's just what is needed. Gotta go C tier, it's a basic ass rice. All right.
right, the artists have spoken. Let's give it a C tier. Next up, Carolina Rice. Thoughts, DT. It's good, especially in traditional dishes. B tier for its versatility. Are you serious? You want to talk bland, bitch? This isn't even bland. It's just bad. Oh, now, Cook Joey. Cook Joe, let me hear it. Put me in my place. You're a worthless sack of donkey shit, Donald. Get on your hands and knees right now and tell me this isn't the worst tasting white rice that exists. It's dependable, but doesn't stand out much. A B tier for me. Stop being a kinky Senator Joe. Ha ha. Listen, this shit is garbage. I'm throwing this into trash tier. The amount of dry mouth this rice gives me should be illegal. Finally, purple rice. GW. It's visually stunning and has a unique taste. A tier for its health benefits and use alongside other vegetables like sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are for losers. This rice is pretty good though. Not as nutritious as the Japanese purple yam, but great in its own light. What is it, a fucking army General Obama? It's just rice for Christ's sake. It's interesting, but not my go-to. I rarely see it on my plate and it always seems a bit dense. Gonna go C tier because I don't like clumpy shit or vitamins. What a fascinating debate on the world of rice. Gonna throw purple rice into B tier for now. It's clear that each type has its champions and unique qualities. To our viewers, what kind of graphic would you like to see? We were thinking a Discord server graphic or an Xbox Live 360 party chat. Drop a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more debates. Until next time, keep enjoying your rice in all its varieties. Welcome to the ultimate music genre debate. We're ranking a variety of music genres today. Let's hit the right note and start the debate. Like and subscribe now, because we need to hit 2,500 subscribers for people to even know who we are. Get on with the video! Kicking things off with rap. Obama, share your thoughts. Yo, this is bullshit. How are you going to start things off like that, man? Come on. Dude, rap is storytelling at its finest, the beats, the rhythm. It's got to be. S tier for me. Absolutely, JB. Rap's influence on culture and music is unmatched S tier. I appreciate its impact, but it's an A tier for me. There's room for more melody and bass. Something about the right rap just gets me going in a fuck the world, I'm the best kind of way. It's really incredible I have to go S tier for lyrical genius, which in essence is the true meaning of telling stories through music. Beautifully said, my man. Good save, Trump. Moving on to country, Obama, what do you think about this one? What? Me? Yes, Obama, come on, we just covered for you. Okay, well, country is, it's interesting. There's never a dull moment in country songs and the vocals are what I'd call insane. So, what would you rank it? Trash tier bro fuck is this shit. How are you gonna get into some southern hicks singing painfully about liquor, farm animals, and plants? Tell us how you really feel, Obama. Country music is like the heart and soul of America. You ain't a true American if you don't understand. He definitely has never hunted down elk with his bare hands, wrestled with bears, and sniped coyotes who were trying to kill his sheep. Neither of you, fuckhead. That rings a bell. Wasn't that the summer of 09 Trump? Yes, sir. The great kid rock is with me everywhere I go. Do I know why I love having him follow me around like a baby piglet or maybe more like a really skinny kangaroo? No, but it's very American. Gotta love the red, white, and blue. Isn't it kind of trash though? Like anyone listening to rap could mentally destroy your ass. Country tells the American story. It's heartfelt and genuine. However, it is now incredibly lame as most country songs nowadays are extremely depressing. You gotta throw this one into A tier. How do we feel about R&B? R&B is smooth, emotional, and timeless. However, I mean that in a creepy way, like R. Kelly still gives me nightmares. It's the soul of music. I'd give it S tier, Donald, wait. No, never mind, R. Kelly did. Trapped in the closet, right? The depth of R&B is incredible. Why does everyone always bring up R. Kelly like he as the only one who made R&B songs? That's facts. Obama, and it definitely speaks to my soul a lot of times. It puts me in a weird trance, though. Not alpha at all. Gotta go B tier. Thoughts on hip-hop? Hip-hop is revolutionary. It's more than music. It's a movement. The best lyrical flows and heart-pulsing beats. Agreed. Chris Brown gives me goosebumps. Yay. Nah, bro. Come on, he got that Octavian voice. Stop acting like you know what that means. It's just what my coke brain was telling me to say, which operates on power level 9,000. Chris Brown got the best voice. All the hoes love Chris Brown. 
He literally beats them to the punch every time. Putting hip hop into S tier. Let's discuss pop next. Pop is universal. It evolves and adapts. Haven't you guys ever heard the song Friday by Rebecca Black? Slapper. Yeah, a knee slapper, that shit is a joke. What are you saying? That song makes my ears bleed. Rebecca became an instant star and will be remembered until the end of time as an immortal figure of positive thinking. Shut up, Joe. I don't want to hear it. You got to go C tier for this one, Donald. I mean, it gets old real quick. At first it seems cool, then a couple songs later it feels incredibly unisexual and awkward. I agree, it's always a bit too flamboyant and unoriginal. It's gotta have more soul and has a certain quirky vibe that I do not like. Not with my billionaire sphere of influence, hell no. Nah. What about alternative rock? It's diverse, innovative, and has depth. A solid S tier for me, timeless. Alt rock is a dumb genre that shouldn't even exist. Take that back, dickhead. Never. This shit has always existed. It was just always called rock. What the hell makes this alternative rock? It's the same exact thing as regular rock. Guitar equals rock, like it makes no sense. Shut up, Obama. Nobody cares. This genre is okay. There's a huge volume of songs, and a lot of people in the 90s made their own music without the constant abuse of cell phones and other dopamine-producing devices. Shut your long-winded ass up, Trump. You forgot that a lot of those songs sucked and was a common method of exposing simps and snakes back in the day. I'm gonna throw it into C tire. There is a huge gap in the quality of these songs. Usually it's either extremely cringy or extremely exciting or inspirational. Next classic rock, let's hear it. Classic rock is timeless, the foundation of modern music genres. Still slaps today and you can always uncover hidden gems on any music platform. It's the epitome of rock. <sighs> Lovely talking to old people at the geriatric center and hearing all of the new song suggestions still. That's pathetic, but you can't beat the classics. S tier. Definitely an S tier genre. This shit changed the game and started the Sigma character and introspective nature of many great men. What are your takes on electronic music? It's innovative and constantly evolving. You're the one who thinks gay frogs are innovative. It's definitely a bit repetitive. I mean, Skrillex and Steve Aoki both suck. Tell me nah. Nah, bro. Skrillex always gets the vibes going. Did you expect Joe to say anything else? Trance and a lot of the subgenres are elite, though. Nothing like getting work done in the farm or in the gym with a nice progressive set pounding in my ears. Always gets you dancing too. Speaks to my soul when those beautiful female trance fairy voices start playing. All right, personally, I am a huge fan of electronic music, especially disco music and also all of the electronic music they put on the memes of myself. Gotta throw this into S tier now. How about jazz, you soulless bastards? No need for that, asshole. Two words to describe this genre, improv and impressions. It's sophisticated and rich in history, S-tier. As they portray in the beginning of Space Jam when they introduce the aliens, it was poppin'. Jazz is the backbone of so many genres. There's a certain charm in that saxophone, man. You know I can agree with you on that, Joe. It's not often that that happens, but the saxophone beat is quite a whirlwind. It's a woodwind, actually. Shut up, George. Nerd, don't you know the sax is unlike any other woodwind? Basically taught myself that shit on my own, going B-tier for this amazing music. How about the blues? Blues are the cultural roots of music. When did you become a cultural historian? Probably when he found out he was a rare fossil. Joe Biden. The decrepit fossil blues have a ton of oomph behind the music. Gets me going in a similar way that good rap does. Bump that shit a little louder for the people in the back. This is the music of city backdrops, courtrooms, union counties, and our very own Oval Office. Big scale tunes, baby, A tier from blues me. Blues tells the human story like no other. S tier. Now let's have a drink to some blues after this. All for it, Obama. I'm down. For God's sake, are you ever not down, George? Leave my guy, George, alone. A tier for classic blues. Finally, classical music, talk to me, men. It's the foundation of all music, timeless and profound, S tier. There will always be a special stimulation from the basis of music we listen to today, brilliantly and meticulously created with care for each note. Classical music is unrivaled, in complexity and beauty. S tier. It's majestic and powerful, but not something I'd listen to daily. Uh, D, A tier. You should listen to it daily as a form of therapy 
for your neurological disorder, just like they would always do for the patients in Oliver Satch's book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. See, that's some shit you would do, Joe. Would not. Come in, George. We've been friends for a long time, right? Tell him that's not something I would do. Joe, you still call me Gerald sometimes, man. Please, Joe, you would always grab the intern's shoes when you were on the floor looking for your glasses and try to put them on. Stop it. Oh, I hate you, Obama. No one is supposed to know that I wear glasses. What a harmonious debate. Thanks, my fellow presidents, for sharing your rankings and insights. It's clear music touches us all in different ways. To our viewers, what do you think? Do you agree with our rankings? Which genre strikes a chord with you? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more musical showdowns. Until next time, keep the music playing. Hello to everyone. You all look really hot, especially the special people who signed up for our membership. Let's read their names out now. We have first, my freaking boy, Bill, Lisa Ray, and Ronald. Cheers to you guys. Everybody go write a W in the comments if you think Joe took way too much crack this morning. Did someone say crack? Like and subscribe too. Listen, everyone knows we're next up. Put a W in the comments if you agree. Next up, baby, that's right. Now to start things off, what do y'all think about sugar cookies? No surprise that Joe starts with sugar cookies. And anything related to stimulants must be the top of mind. Absolutely. These are sugar cookies, Joe. Not booger sugar cookies. God damn it, I thought these were the booger sugar ones. Joe, stop it. They don't make booger sugar cookies, you chimpanzee. These have to go trashed here, then you silly dilly waggle. What cookies are we talking about again? Jesus Christ, Joe! Sugar cookies, you fossil. They're called sugar cookies, and they're delicious. You know, Joe, Santa Claus and reindeer and all that Honestly, shit. Honestly, if brains were leather, you wouldn't have enough to saddle a flea, arguing that there are no such thing as booger sugar cookies. Brains, please. Your idea of a busy day is finding a new place to nap. Do you know how much work that takes? Both of you are squabbling like children over cookies that don't even exist. At least I'm not squabbling on Laura's dick. Whoa, now. Joe, what the fuck? Uh, these sugar cookies are going trashed here. What the hell do you mean? There's no coca. I mean booger sugar in these. Please. We all know if common sense was rain, you'd be a desert. Quiet. Next up, we have chocolate chip cookies. Okay, you're not going to like this, but I do not think they should go S tier. But it's common sense. I can't be the only one who thinks there are better cookies out there than chocolate chips. You might be George. You better back this one up good. Chocolate. 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 Then add the word chips. Whatever comes out of your mouth next better be nice. They're a bit thin. And there are plenty of other cookies I can think of off the top of my head that I would enjoy more. No, you did not just say that, George, these are my precious, ever so special chocolate chocolate chips. Joe loves chocolate chips more than his wife. Was that an insult to Jill or Joe? I actually think a nice oatmeal raisin beats chocolate chip any day. What did you just say? Maybe you're just trying to be different, George. That's not always a good thing. Trust me, I know. I'd expect George to like Keebler Elf cookies since he's the spitting fucking image of the Keebler Elf. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Nice one, Obama. I'm gonna throw chocolate chip cookies into A tier. Now, what are your thoughts on white chocolate macadamia nut cookies? Only a complete barbarian would dare to suggest anything less than C tier for these cookies. Oh shit, Obama, chill. What the fuck, dude? I was gonna say these cookies slap. Definitely a slapperoni. I'd go A tier for these. They always look and taste different, but never disappoint. It's like the ugly girl at the party. It comes in all shapes and sizes, but at the end of the night, there's always great sex. What the fuck kind of shit did I just hear? Wow, he's not wrong. Actually, that was a great analogy. I'm gonna throw these into A tier. Put a clown emoji in the comments for ugly girls. Look, man, this is the truth. I won't lie to you. Listen to how fucked up it sounds and tell me it isn't true. Shut up, Donald. Next up, what do we think about EL fudge cookies? Tastes like my ass crack. Only Michelle knows that. You can't eat your own ass, Donald? That must be something from the inner circles of liberal political circles. I am absolutely certain that that is impossible. I can't believe I'm sharing oxygen with someone who thinks deep fried is a food group. Your palate must be as refined as a sledgehammer. Refined? 
please. You wouldn't know a refined taste if it was served to you on a silver platter. George, the only thing you know about refined taste is refined corn that your hick farmer ass grows in the front yard of your house. What you know about corn in the front of the house? Absolutely nothing. What the fuck is this corn shit? They don't serve this at McDonald's. Back to the thick with two C's elf cookies. These elven Dutchmen are so creamy and taste amazing, like a chocolate icing, not like hot fudge. It looks just like your little elf ears, George. Hey, shut it, Joe. You made the little elf angry, Joe. Look at that. Nice work for real, for real. You're funny, man. Why do you sound so surprised? Going S tier for these. I actually really love them, and the design is impressive. Okay, what do we think about gingerbread cookies? Hey, that's the illegal refugee that broke my oven and stole my brownies. You sure you're not thinking of the gingerbread run game? Now stop fucking with me. These cookies are fire. Definitely a nice change, but I can never forgive that sneaky little man for escaping my baking tray and my wolf oven. He feels no pain. Thriving in baking temperatures like he's bathing in sunlight. Gosh darn it, that sucker got the best of me. Okay, shut the hell up now. This is really good, but it gets old after one freaking bite. Go trash tier. Yeah, these cookies are on the verge of tarnishing the good name of cookies. Oh, great name. Listen, I do enjoy them a little bit. I mean, I did craft him with love and heart and soul and meant to make him into a delicious white chocolate gingerbread cookie with extra Big Mac sauce. I'm gonna hurl. Dude, what the hell did you have to mention Big Mac sauce on gingerbread cookies that's more disgusting than two girls, one cup? Listen, they're really good with some white chocolate. If they are chewy, that is. If they're hard, they turn out kind of whack, like you're eating the back of a burnt pizza oven. Gonna throw this one into B tier. Now, what do we think about M&M cookies? So underwhelming, it's like a good cookie and then you throw it all away for like five M&Ms that you can't even taste over the cookie flavor. Dude, that's so true. M&Ms are great in brownies, but in cookies, you can never fit enough in the cookie. You can always fit it in somehow. Put it in, your sniffer. Snoz, boss, throw this shit into trash tier. You got it. Love it when you call me boss, Donnie. Oh, calm down. Next up, we're just gonna throw Girl Scout cookies into S tier. Let us know what your favorite Girl Scout cookies are in the comments. That's fair, mine are thin mints. The Samoas are quite lovely. Yep, no question. Now, what do we think about oatmeal raisin? Slaps the hardest. I'm going to go S tier. You're one of those oatmeal raisin fairies, huh, George? Sad. This cookie always tastes amazing. The butter really goes well with the oats. I can't stand raisins. I got to go trash tier for this. Yes, me too. There's no way these are better than chocolate Fat chip. Ass. No, it makes sense. All right, I'm going to throw these into B tier. No way they're going higher than chocolate chip. What about butter cookies? These are so bland. Why make a cookie that's so bland? They're basically biscuits, but biscuits are better. Please, biscuits are made with just plain bread, George. Butter cookies always slap. Come in a nice metal tin and look very professional. S tier. No chocolate chips. Enough with the fucking chocolate chips, Joe. I'm going S tier two. Throw him in jail. Okay, what about snickerdoodles? Hey man, these suck. Peanut butter cookies are basically what they should be called. I also find them extremely disappointing. Enough to go trash tier. Almost as disappointing as your presidency. Damn Obama, no need to be that sad. Shut up, GW. Does anyone like these? They're pretty good. I can't tell if I like them or not. They're a solid option though. Maybe go see Now these are going into trash tier with the boogers. Now what do we think about biscotti? Biscotti is great, man, but very boring. Boring? You're the most boring president of all time. That would be true if he didn't stutter so much. That gave us a lot of good yeah, memes. Yeah, thanks for paving the way for me, George. Speeches are so annoying. Yours are more like beatboxing sessions, the way you talk. Fact two, sometimes I just start beatboxing when I'm on the mic. People seem to love it. I go viral all the time. Listen, this shit is pretty bad. I'd give it a D tier. Same, these are so plain. Great, so we'll go trash tier then. Please like and subscribe, and let us know if you want to see a part two. There are still lots of cookies left to rank. You what up, fam? What is everyone wearing today? You know me, dog. I'm always dressed in the finest suits. Not only do I tower over everyone, no offense, George, I also have the best style. What? No, you don't. Don, you wear the same outfit every day. What's wrong with that? Ah, ha, ha. See, there is no style here. To have style, you must be able to pull off different looks and types of clothing, and I am the only one here who does not wear the same exact fucking thing 24-7. You're right, I can't even debate that. GW is the flyest among us. Now let's get into ranking different types of clothes. Let's start with the suit and tie. Wonderful. The epitome of fashion and professionalism. So comfortable, looks great, and I even hop into my pool with this on. Dude, what the hell? This was a bad idea, Joe. We can't rank clothing types. Fuck you, George. The suit and tie is pretty awesome when I'm out and about. Always makes you the best dressed in the room. Yeah, that's definitely a true statement, Barack. But it does get awfully uncomfortable. Plus, the shoes make the fit. So the suit itself is not the end all, be all. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. I always prefer a suit and a sweater over a suit and a tie. You big baby. And that's why you don't get any pussy. Gentlemen, enough. Let's go A tier. 
The only drawback is that it can be a little uncomfortable. For the most part, suits are comfortable, stylish, and keeps you at a good temperature. Next up, what do we think about sweatpants? I'm gonna puke. Sweatpants? They're the comfiest fucking pants ever. Why wouldn't you go S tier? Obama just loves gray sweatpants and sweatpants season, you freaky little transformer. Ha ha, yeah, heard you, George. Sweatpants are only worn by people who masturbate at least three times a day and can't sit still for more than 30 minutes. Pair these with some open toe shoes and you have yourself a complete loser. Yeah, I can't see myself wearing sweatpants. I know you said they're comfortable, but not when I wear my huge diaper. Oh man, Joe's fat diaper bulge in a pair of sweatpants would have me on the floor laughing. Shut up, meanie. Okay, sweatpants are going D tier like every time I wear them. Yes, they're comfortable, but then my body won't settle for anything less comfy. It makes me grumpy and harder to please, and I just can't go out wearing sweatpants all the time. Okay, next up, we have polo shirts. S tier, this is golf fashion 101. It's a polo shirt, Donald, not a fucking golf shirt. The origins of this shirt go back to polo. Yeah, look, there's even a polo player on the shirt. Uh, these are cool and comfortable while still being somewhat professional, but something about them just screams white privilege. Whoa, Don, how can a shirt scream white privilege? It's how you portray yourself, George, but that statement was totally fake news. Such fake news. I'm not privileged whatsoever. What time does my private jet take off again? Pathetic. Were you throwing these, Joe? I'd go B tier. No, George, you dick face. I'm going straight to S tier for these college sports shirts, golfing shirts, corporate shirts. I mean, they all stand for comfort and are the pinnacle of business casual. Great for any and every use, and not too thin, like sweatpants, where my dangalong will show through when I spill my coffee on them. What the fuck? Dangalong. Yes, my dangalong. Now, what do you guys think about jeans? Oh, jeans are for the common folk. I mean, all of my contractors wear jeans every day. But if you're not dealing with sewage, fiberglass, and other rough materials, I think they are the dumbest thing you could possibly wear. Cap, jeans have always stood for casual, everyday wear. Resilient, comfortable, and look good. Gotta go S tier. Jeans are definitely not S tier Obama. Nothing says I'm an average human being like a pair of jeans. Plus, getting a pair that fits well is like trying to land a plane between two towers. Jesus Christ, George. He has a great point. These almost never fit right, and they are extremely uncomfortable for your balls. For women, I'd assume it would be better since they don't have copper stitching chafing their nut sacks. Anyway, I'm throwing these into D tier because I always feel buyer's remorse after buying a pair of jeans. Next, what do you guys think about sweaters? Sweaters are awesome. Sweaters are the best. Like, man, if you're fat like me, they really create a flattering shape. Can confirm. And sweaters are always super warm. However, I am levels above you all in terms of fashion, and sweaters can be itchy. Plus, they get too hot most of the time. Yes, they do, if you're overweight. Good one, Obama. Fuck you, bro. That was just plain mean. Now look, the sweater can be worn with anything, and it looks sexy and cute. Can't be worn in the summer, though, so that has to deduct some points. Very seasonal, I agree. And Obama, fuck you again for that comment before. Let's not hold grudges, Trump, you little bitch. Sweaters are the best winter wear, and they always smell amazing. What the fuck? Huh? What kind of sweaters are you smelling? All of them. Now let's throw these into A tier and move on. What do we think about plain white tees? You mean the band that sings Hey There, Delilah? Delilah. Such a made-up name. Who the fuck knows anyone named Delilah? Sounds like a flower that was genetically deformed into a vine. Incredibly specific metaphor, Joe. That was definitely crack-inspired. The plain white tee is basically the uniform of boomers. It stood the test of time for being a symbol of giving no fucks. Yes, the toughest and baddest of them all wear plain white tees. It's like saying, I'm just gonna do whatever the fuck I wanna do all the time. Yeah, true that. These are always worn under regular clothes too to keep warm. Gotta go S tier. S tier it is. These will always be the most useful shirts. Real G wear plain white tees. You ever heard that saying? No, you just made that up. Of course I did. I'm a made up character after all. Okay, what do you guys think about bowling shirts? Bowling and bowling shirts are for nerds. Completely agree with you. It's like they tried to make stripes and collared shirts both ugly at the same time. Feel like bowling shirts are for people with imposter syndrome too. Like they turn into their fake persona as soon as those thick, ugly stripes and loose fit come on. Yeah, I wouldn't be caught dead in one of these. Trash tier, bye-bye. Okay, now what about collared shirts? Essential. Can be worn with a suit, without a suit. It doesn't matter, but they are light, comfortable, and always allow you to show up for any occasion and not be under or over dressed. Huge W for these shirts. They really are a lifesaver in terms of utility. You never have to think about too much. Just throw on the collared shirt and head to the function. True, 
Doesn't anyone else hate having to wear undershirts with these, though? If I don't, the deodorant just stains the shirt. No, just you. I also don't really love how you have to keep ironing the shirt and take it to the dry cleaners. But then again, you don't necessarily have to do that. Stop complaining, you broke back bitch! Whoa, now, yes, I think I'll go S tier everyday attire for any situation. Now, what do you guys think about chinos? Khakis are quite nice, but why wouldn't you just wear suit pants? Yeah, chinos make you look like you're trying too hard. You wear them in casual situations, but seem like you are trying to one-up everyone. The collared shirt doesn't do that. Definitely feel you there, GW. These are pretty douchey, and it seems like they're always too thin and too stiff. Definitely too stiff. Can't really bend your legs too well. Plus, most of the outfits that you're going to have in your closet won't match well with the khakis. Then there's the decision of what shoes to put on with them. Always confuses me more than usual. I'm going to throw these into D tier. How do you guys feel about joggers? What are joggers? Get with the times, old man. Yeah, bro, the times are tough, and people rebranded sweatpants to be named joggers. That's the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Yeah, the design changed a little bit, too. They have some more flair. Flair? I want to eliminate sweatpants of all forms from the open market. No class. Joggers aren't exactly sweatpants, but they're made of similar material. The ones I have on right now actually are too stiff, just like the chinos do. Like, it's stretchy, but my kneecaps still feel trapped. Yes, and I'm not sure why they decided to shorten the length and make the fabric too thick. I gotta throw them into D tier. They're just a little bit cooler than sweatpants. All righty, that is it for our ultimate clothing tier list. Tell us what you wanna see next in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And a huge shout out to Bill, Ray, Ronald, and Lisa for joining the membership program. Peace. <laughs> 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 Welcome back, folks. Today we'll be ranking Pop-Tarts. I always ate brown sugar Pop-Tarts when I was a kid. Maybe I could have gone without the 74 grams of sugar. Is that why you're so monotone now? Burn out from all that sugar? I wish someone would burn you out, Joe. You have a lot of energy this morning. Burn out Joe? His brain basically burns out every day and then shuts off completely when he hits a seat cushion and goes nap time. All right, let's get serious here, folks. We're ranking strawberry first. No, why the most boring Pop-Tart you're going to rank first? That makes no sense. These are so terrible. Such a fucking Pop-Tart hater, man. These are pretty good. For some reason, this flavor gives me heartburn and a bad aftertaste. This is the generic flavor where if you are ever to see a Pop-Tart being offered in public, they offer you this flavor. The jam is a bit harsh, yes. A big strawberry guy, though. I mean, I'm gonna have to go C tier. The strawberry doesn't taste too great, and these are definitely too available. Even though the brown sugar ones are a bit too sugary for me now, what are your opinions on them? Oh, come on, GW, that's basic. Brown sugar cinnamon is where it's at. S tier for sure, all that strong sugar. Guys, guys, this is the original Pop-Tart. Yeah, back in the day, all we had to pick from was strawberry, blueberry, and these. The first Pop-Tart that was for fat boys instead of all the fruit flavors. Yeah, okay, Donald, keep yapping over there with your fat ass. It's hard to imagine a world where those are your three pathetic Pop-Tart options. I would go blueberry every time. They're terrible. Things with brown sugar are supposed to have an earthier taste to them. Trash tier. Gonna go C tier for these. You gotta enhance the flavor by toasting it and spreading some butter on top. Not a self-sufficient Pop-Tart at all and just becomes way too dry. Next, what do we think of Wild Berry? Wild Berry, more like Mild Berry. That's a C tier at best. And don't even get me started on the unfrosted ones. Trash tier all day. Whoa, shots fired. Wild Berry has the best color scheme and the best design. Like everyone stopped and did a double take when I had these at my school lunch table. When you were a kid or your school lunch table now? Come on now, this shouldn't even be debatable. These Pop-Tarts are what made Pop-Tarts so appealing in the first place. You get a delicious mix of berry flavor that's not too tart and an extra drizz of icing. Slap, they look so quirky and fun like me, almost like Willy Wonka made them. All right, I think they're pretty fire too. Gonna throw these into A tier. Now we have frosted chocolate fudge Pop-Tarts. Great chocolatey Pop-Tarts, and I think chocolatey tarts are the best tarts. How else are you gonna get some tart with your chocolate? I don't know, maybe add some raspberry or citrus flavor, you dipshit. 
Listen, this is no place for name calling. Shut your mouth before you get us demonetized. Obama, the only way we're getting demonetized is if you post a day in the life video. The amount of gay sex and drone striking and trips to Epstein's Island would be enough to take us off the payroll. Controlled opposition, Trump. Obama never went to Epstein's Island. Oh, I call Cap. Not Cap, never been. Gay sex, don't know what you're talking about. These Pop-Tarts are garbage ads, nothing to the chocolate Pop-Tart scene. I have to agree. Yeah, I see what you mean. Trash tier for these, because then you have the s'mores Pop-Tarts. Yeah, s'mores are the best Pop-Tarts. Ooh, yeah, these Pop-Tarts really pull you in. Yes, absolutely. I hope one day someone uses these to lure you into a campfire. Me too, George. The s'mores Pop-Tart deserves S tier. It's the beet flavor, or at least top three. S tier for the s'mores tarts. Okay, what about cookies and cream? Slaps even harder than a McFlurry. If you're putting s'mores into S tier, then these better go there too. Facts. No Pop-Tart hits like these cookies and cream Pop-Tarts. Steer they go, bam. Okay, now what do you guys think about the hot fudge Sunday Pop-Tart? So delicious, oh man, it really tastes like there's hot fudge on it. Yeah, I always get excited about that too. Sit the fuck down, this Pop-Tart ain't all that in a bag of chips. It's sickening to be honest, I can't even stomach one. Yeah, I'm with Obama, actually. These are way too heavy and fat boy-esque. Uh, like these Pop-Tarts literally make me sick. You guys have really weak stomachs then. It has a soft marshmallow filling and vanilla icing with some hot fudge on, too. Truly a delicious snack, one for the ages. Now, I'll put it into C tier. The sprinkles and fudge are all dehydrated, so it gets old very fast. Next up, we have the Cherry Pop-Tart. Amazingly simple and elegant. They are glittery and the little booger sugar cookie sprinks. I thought I told you those don't exist, old man. Yeah, what the fuck? Although those little circular glitter sprinkles are better than a full-ass sprinkle when added to a Pop-Tart. Yeah, for real. This thing looks like a drag queen. Tastes great, though. I'm going to go B tier. Now, what about blueberry? Blueberry Pop-Tarts are some of the best Pop-Tarts I have ever tasted. If blueberry Pop-Tart flavor could be present in my mouth at all times, I would be in eternal content. Such an oddball. Shut the fuck up, Trump. It's not that crazy, you silly fuck. These Pop-Tarts are amazing, and I have to go S tier. I always suck the roof of my mouth after the last bite, trying to hold on to that sweet tart blueberry flavor and the red, white, and blue sprinkles. Delicious. S tier for sure. All right, let's go S tier. We'll have to just do a part two of this and call it wonky pop tart flavors. Let us know in the comments what you liked or didn't like in the comments. Remember, if you don't like it now, that doesn't mean you won't love it later. Goodbye, folks. <laughs>
Next, uh, Bordeaux cookies. A classic choice for those with sophisticated palates. Solid B-tier material, in my opinion. B-tier? Come on, DT. Bordeaux cookies are the epitome of elegance. They deserve at least an A-tier ranking. Hmm, I'll give you that, B.O. Bordeaux cookies do have a certain je ne sais quoi about them. A-tier, it is. J. Nat say what? Yes, that mumba moobly oogly makes a lot of folks grim portal a chock chock hurt where they don't firm some, yeah, excuse me. Holy shit! Dude, someone cut his mic. Don't you have staff there at the White House? Bet y'all really miss Obamacare now, bitches. Agreed, Joe. Bordeaux cookies are like the fine wine of the cookie world. Going A tier. Now, what about Brussels cookies? Brussels cookies? More like Brussels disappointing C tier at best. I have to agree with Obama on this one. Brussels cookies just don't have the same wow factor as the others. All right, let's not lose sight of the goal here, folks. We're ranking Pepperidge Farm cookies, not debating the meaning of life. True that. But can we at least take a moment to appreciate the sheer variety of flavors Pepperidge Farm has to offer? You having a party? What the fuck do you think of the cookies, Joe? You can never stay on topic. Yeah, I was thinking for the cookies, I should get about three dozen. What were you thinking, George? What, what the fuck are you asking me for? Oh, wait a minute. This isn't Jeffrey's Discord server. What were we talking about again? Brussels cookies are going eight here. Next up, what do you guys think about Verona cookies? Slap. Raspberry filling inside those smooth ridges of cookie. Ooh, I have to go S tier. Always love when a cookie is 90% filling pocket. The cookie pairs deliciously with it. Yeah, the jam and the jamboree are so good together. Yeah, just go take your meds, bud. Look, man, maybe he should try just smoking a joint instead. That's not a bad idea. It would probably help with his Alzheimer's. And... I thought he had dementia. What doesn't he have? Listen, these are going into S tier now. What about Sausalitos? Best one in the tin, hands down. These come in bags, George. Idiot! Now, Saucy Tito's is the best Pepperidge Farm flavor. I mean, how else do you expect to get drunk eating cookies? Zesty as a spice goldfish, Joseph. The Sausalito is decent, but you can't tell me there aren't better Peppy Farm cookies. By humbug! By nothing, bitch. They're milk chocolate chip cookies. Make you want to skirt on your barber. Yeah, for real. No idea what I just said. I was just fucking with you guys. Word, bro. Straight facts. Okay, I'll throw these into B tier. Pretty good chocolate chip cookie, but that's way too basic. We got to keep S tier for the unique cookies. My ass is getting a bit warm. I'm going to go take a shit. All right, let's wrap this up and go grab some cookies. But remember, folks... No matter which flavor you choose, always dunk responsibly. Agreed. Now let's go satisfy our sweet tooth and leave no cookie crumb behind. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a Cheesecake Factory tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. Let's dive into the Cheesecake Factory menu and see what's what. First up for judgment, the avocado egg roll. Avocado in an egg roll? That's like mixing business with pleasure. I'm intrigued. But are they really worth the hype? I mean, avocado can be hit or miss in certain dishes. I'm skeptical, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Let's see if these avocado egg rolls can deliver the goods. Spoiler alert, they do. Creamy avocado, crispy shell, it's like a party in your mouth. Rating for the avocado egg roll, a solid B tier. Next up, the bang bang chicken and shrimp. Bang bang chicken and shrimp? Sounds like a flavor explosion waiting to happen. I've heard good things about this one. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Bang, bang, this dish is like a taste bud carnival, spicy, crispy, and oh, so satisfying. I'm not sure if it's the spice or the flavor, but something's definitely got me hooked on this bang, bang, chicken and shrimp. Rating for the bang, bang, chicken and shrimp is S tier. Bang, bang, bitches, moving on to the factory nachos. Now that's what I call nachos, loaded with cheese, beans, and all the fixings. And that cheese pull, it's like a work of art. Don't forget about the jalapenos for that extra kick. These factory nachos are the real deal. I could eat these nachos every day and never get tired of them. Cheesecake Factory knows how to do appetizers, right? Ranking for the factory nachos, a mouth-watering A tier. Next on the chopping block, the Thai lettuce wraps. Who knew lettuce could be so exciting? These Thai lettuce wraps are like a flavor explosion in every bite. And that sauce, it's like liquid gold. I could eat these wraps all day. All right, I'll admit it. These wraps are seriously good. Cheesecake Factory knows how to do fusion flavors, right? Yuck, these Thai lettuce wraps are like swampy sandpaper with spicy chicken poop turds. Trash tier, garbage food. I'd rather eat my greens grazing from my superb Trump golf course. Up nest, the Louisiana chicken pasta. Louisiana chicken pasta? Sounds like a spicy adventure waiting to happen. But can it really compete with traditional pasta dishes? I mean, Louisiana flavors are bold. I'm intrigued, 
but skeptical. Let's see if this pasta can handle the heat. Spoiler alert, it can. Creamy, spicy, and packed with flavor, this Louisiana chicken pasta is a basic and mid-excuse for real pasta. Rating for the Louisiana chicken pasta, a basic C tier. Up next is the juiciest of juicy buns and moist meat, the Glam Burger. Glam Burger? That's like a burger on steroids. I'm not sure if I should be impressed or intimidated by this behemoth of a burger. Let's not judge a burger by its size, people. Let's see if this Glam Burger can deliver on flavor. Holy cow! Literally! This Glam Burger is a meat lover's dream come true. Juicy, flavorful, and stacked sky high. S tier my homes. Now on to the basil tomato flatbread. Now that's what I call a flatbread. Simple, yet packed with flavor. And those fresh basil and tomato slices, it's like a taste of summer in every bite. I'm usually a meat lover, but I have to admit, this basil tomato flatbread is seriously delicious. Agreed. Cheesecake Factory knows how to do flatbreads right. Rating for the basil tomato flatbread, a refreshing position in B tier. Now let's travel to the culinary et and talk about their chicken pot stickers. Chicken pot stickers? Sounds like a party in my mouth waiting to happen. But can they compete with traditional pot stickers? I mean, chicken is great and all, but it's got to bring the flavor. I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's see if these pot stickers can stick the landing. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but these chicken pot stickers just don't pack enough punch for me. They're bland, they're boring, and they're definitely not winning any flavor awards. Rating for the chicken pot stickers a disappointing D tier. Now let's talk meat and potatoes. The Cheesecake Factory's shepherd's pie. Yet I. Shepherd's pie? That's like the ultimate comfort food. But can it really compete with homemade shepherd's pie? I mean, Cheesecake Factory has some big shoes to fill. Let's give it a fair shake, folks. Who knows, maybe Cheesecake Factory has a shepherd's pie ace up their sleeve. Well, color me impressed. This shepherd's pie is like a warm hug on a cold day. Creamy mashed potatoes, savory meat filling, it's comfort food perfection. Rating for the shepherd's pie, a comforting A tier. Now, on to the crispy Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts? That's a bold move, Cheesecake Factory. But can they really make Brussels sprouts exciting? I mean, they're just little green balls of, well, green. Let's reserve judgment until we've had a taste. You never know, these Brussels sprouts might surprise us. Surprise indeed. These crispy Brussels sprouts are like little bites of crispy, flavorfulest crap. Who knew veggies could be this depressing? Rating for the crispy Brussels sprouts a D tier. Now to my favorite food group, cheese. Up next, mozzarella sticks. Mozzarella sticks? Now we're talking. But can they compete with classic mozzarella sticks? Let's not judge a mozzarella stick by its cover, folks. Let's see if Cheesecake Factory can deliver the gooey, cheesy goodness we all know and love. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but these mozzarella sticks just don't hit the mark for me. They're bland, they're boring, and they're definitely not winning any flavor awards. There are no flavor awards, Trump. Closest thing you have to that I Guy Fieri's Flavor Town, and that's not even a real place. I checked all the White House files, and I can't seem to find this rumored Flavor Town. Rating for the mozzarella sticks, a disappointing D tier. It's like a bait and switch from crispy, beautiful mozzarella sticks to wet fish salad. And finally, the original cheesecake. What do you guys think about this one? Ah, uh, the original cheesecake, a classic for a reason. Creamy, rich, and oh so satisfying. It's like a slice of heaven on a plate. I could eat this cheesecake every day and never get tired of it. Cheesecake Factory has truly mastered the art of cheesecake. Forget the main course. I'm diving straight into dessert with this original cheesecake. It's luscious, velvety mouthful, gives me the tingles, and makes me want to bathe in milky sugar tub of dreams. Just plop some glazed strawberries on there and call me Big Papa. S tier in my book, motherfuckers. Speaking of which, Melania dear, can you get my bath ready for me? Make sure to throw extra heavy cream in there, will you? Peace bros, it's rubber ducky time. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos and consider joining the group membership so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke, we work on 100% commission, but our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some real deal closers. Another thing, we also have a full touch reel for people who want to make faceless AI videos, and the link to that course is in the description. The power is in the people. Have a great night.
Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a Starbucks tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. No shit! Quiet! Give that like and subscribe button a bump for me, and click the bell notification if you are subscribed, because not too many subscribers actually get notified of our videos. All right, people. Let's get this caffeine-fueled party started. We've got some serious tasting to do. Pour me a cup of joe with bump of the white stuff in the morning, and I am ready to raw dog the day, fellas. Starbucks is my plug, and up first on this list, the Caramel Frappuccino. But can it really compete with other Starbucks classics? I mean, caramel is great and all, but it's got to bring the flavor. I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's see if this Frappuccino can live up to the hype. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but this Caramel Frappuccino just isn't doing it for me. It's too sweet, too icy, and definitely not worth the hype. Rating for the caramel frappuccino. A disappointing D tier up next, the white chocolate mocha. White chocolate mocha? That's like a decadent dessert in a cup. But can it really compete with classic mochas? I mean, white chocolate is great and all, but the whiteness makes it more bland than the full-on chocolate mocha flavor. Holy caffeine, Batman. This white chocolate mocha is like a warm hug on a cold day. Creamy, rich, and oh so satisfying. Rating for the white chocolate mocha moseys its way to A tier just short of being the supreme leader of Java Land. Now on to the Akai Strawberry Refresher. Akai Strawberry Refresher? That's a mouthful. But can it really compete with classic refreshers? I mean, Akai is great and all, but it's got to bring the flavor. Let's not judge a refresher by its name, folks. Let's see if this Akai Strawberry Refresher can deliver the fruity goodness we all know and love. Well, folks, color me impressed. This Akai Strawberry Refresher is like summer in a cup. Refreshing, fruity, and downright delicious. Such a delightful icy liquid best enjoyed on the yachts to private islands, if you know what I mean. Shut it, Don. You'll literally spill the coffee beans on us. Cool it, dog. Okay, let's throw this Akai Strawberry Refresher thingy into B tier. Now on to, to the, the chai tea latte. But can it really compete with other Starbucks classics? I mean, chai is great and all, but it makes my nose tickle when I drink it. I always want to love chai, but the peppery cinnamon vibes don't make sense. Let's reserve judgment until we've had a taste. You never know, this chai tea latte might surprise us. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but this chai tea latte just isn't doing it for me. It's too spicy, too sweet, and definitely not worth the hype. Love this spicy warm hug in a cup, but I get your take, Donnie. Rating for the chai tea latte, a C tier. Average in a tea that wants to pass off as spicy coffee. C town, baby. Now let's get back to the OG of Starbucks drinks. The cold brew. It's like a jolt of caffeine straight to the veins. I mean, cold brew is great and all, but it's got to bring the flavor. Shit just seems like an easily offended version of iced coffee, like you are misgendering it or something. What, where am I? What time is it? Where's my venti iced makala kakala sweet whippy cream liquid alpha juice? Damn it, Sleepy Joe. Wake the fuck up. You had one job to do. You're like this cold brew and boring and can't even do your job. This is too bitter, too strong, and not festive enough for me. All right, gang, let's throw this marked iced version of bean water into C tier. Up next, the flat white. Flat white? That's like a classic coffeehouse staple. I like to sip this when curling up to a good book. It makes me feel more refined, British, and smart when I drink this. But can it really compete with other Starbucks classics? I mean, flat whites are great and all, but this is a joke of a drink. Talk about inflation, half of the cup is filled with whipped R and only half the actual drink. A rip-off, I tell you. Holy caffeine, Batman! This flat white is warm, rich, and creamy like me! I like the idea of sipping this with a nice paperback novella and my Hugh Hefner terry cloth robe, but I'm not down with a full-price drink when half of it is just air. This is going straight to D tier. Now, onto the iced green tea lemonade. Drinking this makes my insides feel healthy because you know the antioxidants and all. Iced green tea lemonade, it tastes like iced grass juice. I'll drink the lemonade part because it makes my lips smack from the tartness, but hold the green tea. I agree, gang. People just drink this because they want to feel good about themselves, but make it bearable to drink by pumping all the lemony corn syrup in there. Mmm, corn syrup and lemon. Sounds like heaven in a cup. I don't mind the hint of grass. Easy B tier just for the antioxidants. Fire right after a jog. Cools me down like the summer rain. And next, the iced shaken oat milk pistachio latte. Iced shaken oat milk pistachio latte? Now we're talking. It's like a party in my mouth waiting to happen. Oh my God, I love this new seasonal flavor. Every time I drink it, I jam to Gangnam Style. Remember that pistachio commercial with PSY and those dancing pistachio? 
classic nutty dance vibe. I love that commercial dog. Me and Jill bust out our Gangnam style moves whenever that song came on. This Starbuck rendition of a classic nut flavor infused with coffee beans and faux milk and nemesis of the soy milk. This ice shaken oat milk pistachio latte is best shared when Gamgum styling with your beastie. Right, Obamna? I love all the nut varieties, but this one in drink form checks all the boxes for me. Def and A tier contender. Agree, DT, a tier for the iced shaken oat milk pistachio. Now, what do we think about the pumpkin loaf? I am only mentioning this because the 49ers claimed it had magical nourishing powers that made them perform at a higher level. Maybe they decided to get a muffin on the day of the Super Bowl, though. Probably decided to just throw the game because that's what the script said, George, you dumbass. I can't believe I have to look at Mahomes' stupid face on commercials again for another year. Wait, I thought the 35ers won the Stanley Cup last June. Is that what we're talking about? The Stanley Cup is for hockey, Disgraceful. Joe. Disgraceful! All right, this is getting out of hand. I'm going to throw this into trash tier. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies, and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos and consider joining the group membership so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke. We work on 100% commission. But our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a toilet paper tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. Tonight, we'll be discussing the merits and drawbacks of one of the most controversial topics of all time, the toilet paper we use to wipe our asses every morning. I feel like you can tell a lot about a person based on the toilet paper they use. Let's start with a staple and classic brand, Charmin. Dubia, your thoughts? Well, let me tell you, Charmin is as soft as a newborn calf's behind. It's like wiping with a cloud. Oh, come on, Georgie Porgy. Charmin may be soft, but it leaves behind more residue than a sniffing political scandal. I have to agree with Joe on this one. Charmin is overrated. It's like trying to clean up a mess with a feather duster. Might as well wipe my ass with gold bars. Probably more effective. I'll have to respectfully disagree with both of you. Charmin strikes the perfect balance between softness and strength. It's a classic for a reason. A solid A-tier placement here. Soft, supportive, kind to balmy butt cheeks. Moving on to our next brand, Scott. Donald, care to serve your thoughts on this one? Scott is the epitome of efficiency. It gets the job done without all the frills. Plus, it's as tough as my negotiation tactics, duh. Tough, maybe, but it feels like sandpaper on my delicate diapered skin. I'd rather use leaves from the garden. Now, now, Joe, Scott may not be the softest option, but it's reliable. Like the trusty steed on my ranch, it's been in American homes forever. A nostalgic staple of good ole Americana. Plus, who wants to fuck with something named Scott? I have to agree with GW on this one. Scott may not be luxurious, but it's practical and affordable. Let's throw this one into C tier. It makes my tush irritated, and I don't like how thin it is. You need to use like half the roll to sufficiently eradicate all the dingleberries left behind. Our next brand, Angel Soft. Angel Soft lives up to its name. It's gentle on the skin and provides a heavenly wiping experience. Thoughts? Heavenly? More like flimsy? Angel Soft falls apart faster than a house of cards in a windstorm. You're left with a wad of cotton lint in your nether regions and it's unacceptable. Angel Soft is too delicate for my liking. It's like trying to clean up an oil spill with a cotton swab. It doesn't get the job done and not worth the headache of butt lint. I have to respectfully disagree with both of you. Angel Soft strikes the perfect balance between softness and strength. It's like wiping with a cloud, and each heavenly air hug left by Angel Soft on my booty cheeks makes it clap harder on most mornings. Settled. This tragedy is getting put in B tier. It's soft, but it disintegrates pretty easily, but gets the job done without giving me a diaper rash. Now let's discuss Quilted Northern. Joe, your take? Quilted Northern is the Cadillac of toilet paper. It's plush, it's absorbent, and it's downright luxurious. Luxury comes at a cost, Joey boy. Quilted Northern is like flushing money down the toilet. I'd rather wipe my butt with my millions of $100 bills. Quilted Northern is overpriced and overrated. Give me any other a sturdy roll of paper any day. This toilet paper is too bougie without having license to be bougie. Stop capping, George. Quilted Northern is worth every penny. This turn polisher is sliding into B tier. Moving on to seventh generation. Donald, what say you? Seventh generation? More like seventh disappointment. It's like wiping with re recycled tears of liberal hippieism. I have to agree with the big Don on this one. 
Seventh generation may be eco-friendly, but it sacrifices comfort in the process. Comfort, Schmomfort, seventh generation is for those who prioritize saving the planet over saving their behinds. Trash Aroni. Seventh generation is gentle on the skin and gentle on the planet. It's a win-win in my book. Going B tier for this TP. Our next brand, Cottonelle. Cottonelle is the gold standard of toilet paper. It's soft, it's strong, and it's got those fancy ripples for extra cleaning power, just the way I like it. Make those ridges work for you. Oh, ridges. I love ridges. This toilet paper leaves no prisoners behind. Cottonelle may be soft, but it's overpriced. You're paying for the name, not the quality. I have to side with DT on this one. Cottonelle is a classic, but there are more affordable options that provide the same level of comfort. B tier. How about green forest toilet paper? Soft maybe, but too thin and not enough grippage to get a good wipe. Give me something with a bit more backbone. I have to agree with Dubia on this one. If you have to wipe your ass more than five times because your toilet paper is trash, then you're failing at life. Green forest is too flimsy, fake, and not even passable as toilet paper. Green forest is like the magical nature giants wiping your behind and brings it back to life. It a breath of fresh air in the toilet paper aisle. It's eco-friendly and doesn't break the bank. Donnie, too harsh. Green Forest is a great option for those who prioritize sustainability without sacrificing quality, bro. Don has some good points. Throwing this one into C tier. And finally, let's discuss Members Mark, the Sam's Club brand. My favorite thing to do is go to the Sam's Club with Jill on Sundays, and when Members Mark is on sale, we stock up on this. It may not have the fanciest name, but it gets the job done. It's soft, it's strong, and it's affordable. Affordable, maybe but I'd rather splurge on something softer. It's like the peasant of all peasant toilet paper brands. I have to agree with DT on this one. Members Mark is a budget-friendly option, but you get what you pay for. Members Mark may not be the softest option, but it's reliable, but it is pretty trash compared to others. So trash tier it is. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies, and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos, and consider joining the group membership so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke. We work on 100% commission, but our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some real deal closers. Another thing, we also have a full tutorial for people who want to make faceless AI videos and the link to access that knowledge is in the description. The power is in the people. Have a great night. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a Chobani yogurt tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. No shit! Let's dive right in. Our first flavor is the classic vanilla bean. Well, folks, let me tell you, vanilla bean is like the good old days. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's got that hint of exotic vanilla. A level up from the plain yogurt with more flavor. Ah, but vanilla bean lacks excitement. We need something bold, something adventurous. There is nothing spectacular about vanilla or a bean. Like it's bland and plain and just tastes like sugar milk water with a hint of exoticism, but barely excites my taste buds. Anticlimactic, straight D tier. Donnie, that is the most passionate speech against vanilla that I've ever heard. Total trash tier and not exciting at all. This is a sad morning cup of underachieving yogurt. Puts me to sleep. That's why I'm all about the raspberry lemonade. It's up next. This yogurt flavor is like a party in your mouth. Raspberry lemonade, give me a break. We need flavors that represent real Americans. What is this fusion turd of a flavor? It's like curdled sad lemonade left out overnight. Thick, tangy, raspberry, and tart lemon combination is just confusing to me. Preach, bro, the, this confused yogurt is an abomination to all yogurts, like worst combination ever. Now, now, let's not hate on this flavor too much. It's sweet, it's tangy, the perfect balance of assertive flavors to fuel your gas tank midday, the delightful snack for the afternoon crash, and it's fun. Who doesn't like fun? Interesting point made, boom, chakalaka, obamnahana. Let's throw this into B tier. Now, on to our next flavor, which might be a more acceptable yogurt duo of flavors. What do we think about strawberry banana? Strawberry banana, huh? Reminds me of my days on the ranch. It's like a smoothie without the hassle. My favorite thing to do is scoop my strawberry banana yogurt and feel the satisfying thickness cling onto the back of the spoon. Licking the banana strawberry gloopy glops from the back of my yogurt spoon is my favorite form of tongue exercise. Oh God, George, we don't need to hear about your tongue aerobics. We are talking about yogurt here, not Laura, okay? 
but must agree the strawberry banana is good and gets the job done. It's not an exciting flavor, mid in my opinion. It's mid, but I prefer strawberry banana the best out of the basic flavors. Easy B tier ranking. Let's travel to the tropical flavor town of Chobani Yogurts. How about Mango Passion Tango? It's a vacation in a cup. Mango Passion Tango? Sounds like something you'd order at a fancy restaurant or a on order you'd place on one of this spicy Caliente apps, but this flavor is trying too hard. Oh, oh, mango. It's so juicy and flavorful, and Mango Passion Tango actually tastes like what it promises. A passionate tango with a hot mango. Oh, baby. Michelle doesn't allow me to experience passion or tango, so I ate to admit it, but... I've never actually had this one. My vote doesn't count. Well, Obama, hate to break it to you, but it doesn't, and I'm president, so executive order this flavor into s Thai ear Booyah. See, I can be scary when want to be. Neener, neener, neener. Up next, blueberry blast yogurt. Love the bits of blueberry in there. This yogurt is American through and through. Blueberry blast is good. It's a timeless, combination that never fails to please. I hate this flavor. It tastes danky for sure, but not the kind of dank that I get down with. It barely tastes like blueberry, and this just tastes a blast if farts. Not a fan. Awful. Disgaceful. He's up, partner. Blueberry Blast blows other blueberry yogurts out of the sky. It's a masterful orchestra of flavors with just the right amount of sweetness. Fine, let's stick this into B tier. On to the big kahuna of all Amerivan flavors. What y'all think about the Chobani Peach Peach Cobbler? Peach Cobbler? Well, slap my grandma and call me Sally. This yogurt flavor is delightful. Ah, peach cobbler, a true Southern delicacy. It's like a warm hug from Georgia itself. Kind of like the opposite of those rigged elections. Peach cobbler? Sounds like something you'd find at a fancy dessert bar, but not the kind of thing you want to eat in gloop plop poop texture form. Def a hard no for me. Okay, okay, throwing the peach peach cobbler in D tier onto cookies and cream. What are our initial thoughts, boys? Look, folks, I've tasted a lot of yogurts in my time, and let me tell you, this one's a winner. It's bigly delicious, believe me. Well, let me tell you folks, cookies and cream is like a Texas two-step for your taste buds. It's got that creamy goodness with just the right amount of cookie crunch. Yeehaw. Well, let me tell you folks, cookies and cream is like a Texas two-step for your taste buds. It's got that creamy goodness with just the right amount of cookie crunch. Yeehaw. I have to agree with Don on this one. Cookies and cream has a smooth texture and a satisfying sweetness. It's definitely top tier. Throwing this into A tier. All right, let's move on to our next contender, mixed berries. Thoughts? Mixed berries is a flavor explosion in your mouth. It's like a summer picnic in every spoonful. This one is up there. Mixed berries, folks, let me tell you, it's like eating victory for breakfast. It's the flavor of winners. Mixed berries, huh? Reminds me of picking strawberries back in Crawford. But I gotta say, this yogurt's got more flavor than a stump speech in Iowa. Mixed berries offers a refreshing burst of fruity goodness that's hard to beat. Okay, let's hurry this up. I have an ice cream shop opening to go to, and they promised to let me lick all of the flavor buckets before they open shop to the public. C tier for this schmixed smeri schmegma. What do you all think about the strawberry cheesecake Chobani flips flavor? Ah, uh, strawberry cheesecake, the taste of Americana. It's like a slice of heaven in a cup with a creamy, dreamy texture. Couldn't have said it better myself, George. Strawberry cheesecake is a timeless classic with its rich, creamy flavor and hints of sweetness. Let me tell you, folks, strawberry cheesecake is the flavor of winners. It's huge. It's bigly delicious. I have to agree. Strawberry cheesecake offers a decadent and indulgent experience that's hard to rival. Oh, oh, I love anything with cheese and strawberries. Love this in yogurt form. Really pairs well with a whiskey neat and a cigar. This is top tier for sure. Yes. Let's end this yogurt flavor showdown by placing the crown on the king of all yogurt flavors. S tier for the strawberry cheesecake. I'm out, Ty. Make sure to check out our links and other videos in the description. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a Doritos tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. Let's kick things off with the classic Mandarin. Ah, Mandarin. It's refreshing. It's citrusy. It's like a vacation for your taste buds. Mandarin, please. We need flavors that represent real Americans. Why are we even talking about Jaredos? I mean, I guess it's decent contender in the orange soda genre. The citrusy bubbles slap and the Mandarin Joritos is a staple at the bodega stores. If the corner store El Chapo sells Joritos, they will almost always have Mandarin on deck. A tea air worthy. All right, all right, the Mandarin Jurito is going into A tier. Now on to our next flavor, tamarind. Tamarind. 
Ah, it's like a burst of tangy sweetness mixed with a hint of spice. It's like the perfect balance between savory and sweet, reminiscent of those hot summer days in the coal mine back in the olden days. It makes me smack my lips and go mua in between each swing of the pickaxe. Is tamarind even a fruit, though? What is it exactly? And how do they get it into the bottle? Tamarind looks like brown, sticky snow peas. But I have to admit, this flavor is bold. But it's too adventurous for me. It's a little too intense. Mid-D. Tamarind. It's like a journey back to my roots, you know? The depth of flavor, the richness of history. It's like drinking a piece of culture, rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. It is believed to aid digestion, boost immunity, and promote overall well-being. Every time I drink a tamarind Doritos, it immediately makes me want to poop. Just for that relief, this should go into A tier. Uh, hmm. Tamarind Doritos is interesting. I appreciate its cultural significance and the depth of its flavor, but personally, I find it a bit overpowering. This is going into D tier. Next up, pineapple. What y'all thinking, boys? Gross, sleepy Joe. I don't need to visualize Jill's stale pineapples. For me, the pineapple Doritos flavor is the OG classic. Slaps. Throw a splash coconut milk in a pineapple Doritos and instant pina coladas. For you know, all the poor people who will never experience a real pina colada served up to you while roasting to an appropriate Donnie orange hue. My perfect day. Arriba. The pineapple Doritos sends tingles down my spine. The tropical juiciness of the pineapple really comes through in this Doritos bottle. Almost as delightful as sucking on Jill's pineapples. Ha ha, I still got it. Bow chica wow. Wow, this is S tier worthy. Undisputed S tier. Finally, you boys are making doggone sense. The pineapple Doritos reigns supreme. Up next, apple Doritos. Apple? Seriously? It's like biting into a crisp, juicy slice of heaven. It beats all of the other Doritos flavors. You better believe me. I'm the master farmer of the big apple, New York. See, I know my apple flavors. I'm a connoisseur of all things apple after all. Whoa, slow down there, D. Apple's good, but it's not blowing my mind. The mild apple flavor in this Doritos bottle misses the damn mark. It just tastes like fizzy apple leaf water. D tier for me. You know, I'm gonna have to agree with Obama on this. Apple's all right, but it's nothing to write to the farm about D tier for me. Wow, I didn't know such an unassuming fruit in soda form would get so much hate. I'm only placing this Ginto D tier instead of trash tier because Donnie Boy was going to the mat for this flavor. Now let's mix it up and talk about where all the Doritos fruits mash together, creating the undeniable fruit punch flavor. Thoughts? Fruit punch, baby! It's like a party in a bottle bringing all of the artificial flavored fruits in one spot. S tier. I love drinking this almost as much as Mexican Coke because we all know Coke is made best by Mexicans. I gotta agree with you there, D. Fruit Punch is a classic crowd pleaser. My speed take. Fruit Punch is all right, but it's a little too sweet for my taste. I'd rather drink cough syrup. Harsh take, Barack. This Doritos flavor is sweet, tangy, and totally refreshing. A tear. Now, Limon. Ah, uh, it's like a burst of sunshine in every sip. Tangy, refreshing, and just the right amount of zing. A tear. I have to agree with the Don on this one. Lime is like a little slice of citrus paradise. It's bold, it's bright, but whenever I drink this, my brain short circuits, and I think, am I drinking lime soda or lemonade? A very confusing experience for my taste buds and my brain. Lemon is a classic, no doubt but it's a little too sour for my taste. I drink in this gives me a tummy ache. Wah, trash tear. It's okay, I guess, but it's not exactly my cup of tea, and this also makes my tummy freak out with the lime fizziness. Trash tear. Up next, guava. Guava? Now we're talking. It's like a tropical vacation in a bottle. Sweet, juicy, and absolutely delicious. Seriously elevated Doritos flavor. Guava, huh? It's a bit too exotic for my taste. I prefer something a bit more mainstream. Whack flavor. And again, I ask, what the hell is this fruit anyway? It's like a pear trying to be an apple and trying to be tart. D tier. What are you smoking, D? You're confused. Guava is like a little slice of paradise. It's unique, it's flavorful, and it's definitely deserving of A tier. Guava, it's all right, I guess. But it's not exactly blowing my mind. I could take it or leave it. I'll go with C tier. And now for our final flavor to judge today, mango Doritos. A mango? Well, slap my diapers off and call me surprised. That sounds downright delicious. 
watermelon, ahem, I mean mango, beep boop bop. Jesus Christ, Joe is having another episode. We better wrap this up quick before Joe runs out of juice. Oh yes, the mango Jaritos never disappoints and always find myself happy and calm after chugging a bottle. Give me a mango Jaritos any day. It's bold, it's tropical, it's the taste of victory. Mango is good. It's a refreshing flavor that never fails to please. Speaking of which, I'm sipping on one right now. Solid flavor. Have to agree, I love sitting on my rocking chair looking out onto the ranch with mango Jaritos in hand. This one gets an A tier. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies, and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos, and consider joining the group membership so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke. We work on 100% commission, but our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some real deal closers. Another thing, we also have a full tutorial for people who want to make faceless AI videos, and the link to access that knowledge is in the description. The power is in the people. Have a great night. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a hot dog tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. Make sure to give that like button a little kiss for me. Now this is a tier list I've been waiting to hot digity dog dive into. Did you know I'm a world ranked hot dog eating competitor? Glad I beat George on the coin toss to moderate this hot dog tier list. I'm just pissed Snoop flaked on us for this one. His takes would have been hot dog, you know what I'm saying? Up first, the classic beef hot dog. Oh, the classic beef dog. Let me tell you folks, T classic hot dog. It's the epitome of American greatness when it comes to sausage inserted in between bread. You've got the juicy beef, the soft bun, perfect harmony. And don't get me started on the toppings. You can go simple with mustard and ketchup. The classic beef dog is the perfect naked palate to dress up. Agreed, D. It's a timeless choice. Simple yet satisfying. I'll give it a solid A tier. You're not giving enough cred to the beef hot dog, Obama. Place some respect on its name. Call me old-fashioned, but I appreciate the simplicity of a classic beef hot dog. It's a dependable choice. This is an S tier. <laughs> I'm with you, George. It's the one hot dog everyone can agree on. Jill keeps a classic beef hot dog in her purse. So when I get hangry and throw a tantrum, she tosses one of these my way, and I'm happy and settled like a baby to a pacifier. All right, Joey boy. Chill with the baby talk. But can agree with you boys. This one is deserving of S-tier status. Next up, the New York style hot dog. Joe, what are your Alzheimer ridden thoughts on this one? Uh, the Big Apple's pride and joy. Tangy mustard, zesty sauerkraut. It, it's a flavor explosion. The sauerkraut's boldness, boldness. Dancing with the yellow mustard goodness is good, but not as elite as other hot dog flavor flavors. Mm. I appreciate the effort, but it's a bit too much for me to be honest. I love the New York vibe, but sometimes less is more. New York style, baby. It's like a flavor parade in your mouth, but I'm not down with sauerkraut all the time. This goes into B tier onto the Chicago style hot dog. Obama, since you're from Chi Town, I'm sure you have some strong opinions on this one. Now, this is a hot dog that brought to legendary greatness and put Chicago on the map. Chicago style hot dogs are a true culinary masterpiece. You've got the poppy seed bun, the perfectly grilled Vienna beef hot dog, and then, of course, the toppings. Mustard, onions, sweet pickle relish, tomato slices, pickles, sport peppers, and a sprinkle of celery salt. Each ingredient adds its own unique flavor and texture. It's a symphony of taste, a reflection of the vibrant culture and diversity of my hometown. Oh, yes, Obamna. Remember when you took me to your favorite hot dog spot in Chi Town? As I suckled on the tip of that Chicago-style hot dog, I felt the community and tradition. It's a symbol of the city's rich culinary heritage and the pride that Chicagoans take in their food, whether you're enjoying one at a ball game, a neighborhood barbecue, or a local hot dog stand. It's a shared experience that brings people together. This dog brings with it pure bliss. Chicago style is an attempt at hot dog artistry. 
but a little too frou-frou. For me, with it's the celery salt and crap, it's trying too hard. Shut it, W, Chicago-style hot dog brings people together, one celery, salt bite at a time. This is obviously a sad, overly progressive hot dog. The Chicago-style hot dog is barking its way into D-tier, would go trash tier, but putting a little respect on your name, Obama, and your hometown. Up next, the chili cheese hot dog, the alpha dog of dogs as some would day. What do you boys think? Now we're talking comfort food. The hearty chili, the gooey cheese, it's warm, spicy goodness. Slopped on a beef dog nestled in a thick bun to support its girth makes this one a top dog. Mm. Agreed, Joe. But the chili cheese dog has its flaws too. But the cheese melted all over the chili is a guilty pleasure of hot dog lovers everywhere. It's indulgent and satisfying but only flawed if the undercarriage or bun holding it is wet and too moist to hold the damn hot dog and can be a messy flop. You know how many chili stained shirts Laura has had to wash? For that, I vote a Chili tier. cheese, the rebel of the hot dog world. It's bold, it's messy, it's everything you want, but the mushy bun risk factor has down to B tier. Now let's dive right in with our more ethnic dogs, the Hawaiian hot dog. What do you all think? Aloha, flavor explosion. Pineapple, teriyaki sauce, it's a tropical party in your mouth. The Hawaiians got it right, and this is an island delight. Hawaiian hot dog, a sweet and savory surprise. It's like a luau in a bun, but the stickiness of the pineapple can be off-putting, so this one is a controversial dog. Just for the exotic flair, I'll say soft B, hard C Pineapple tier. on a hot dog? Madness. It's kind of like sacrilege, right? I want to hate it, but secretly love Hawaiian hot dogs. B boop dot dot him torn. But I have to admit, the combination works surprisingly well. Well, this tastes like crap, and the sauce makes it all too heavy. I don't need congealed pineapple on my dog. On to the buffalo hot dog. George, what's your verdict? Buffalo hot dog, a fiery fiesta for your taste buds. Spicy buffalo sauce, creamy blue cheese. It's a flavor explosion. Yeehaw. This is a cowboy's buffalo hot dog. Buffalo hot dog, bring in the heat. It's like a flavor punch in the face in a good way. And I get punched in the face often, so I would know. Too <laughs> spicy for my liking. And blue cheese, absolutely not. I don't want moldy cheese on my hot dog. Why would I want to taste ass on in my dog? Blue cheese is an overwhelming fail and doesn't add anything to the beefy flavor. Trash tier. Now let's wrangle the Texas BBQ hot dog. Obama, what's your opinion? Uh, finally, a hot dog with some respect for tradition. BBQ sauce, coleslaw. It's a taste of the Lone Star State. The smoky flavor mixed with the creamy mayo chilling the coleslaw slathered on a beefy dog is Well, epic. let me tell you, partner, there ain't nothing like a good old Texas BBQ style hot dog. It's like a taste of home wrapped in a bun. You got your smoky barbecue sauce, your tangy coleslaw, maybe even some crispy onions on top, paired perfectly with an iced cold brewski, S tier. BBQ on a hot dog, sign me up. It's smoky, it's savory, the big cowboy flavor never disappoints. Is it weird that I love eating Texas BBQ hot dogs in my underwear, cowboy hat, and my Lucas cowboy boots? My fave way to eat this dog. Okay, okay, Texas brings home a medal. He'll throw the Texas BBQ style hot dog in a tear. Finally, last for ranking, the Sonoran hot dog. Sonoran hot dog, a spicy sensation wrapped in bacon. Pinto beans, jalapeno salsa. It's a flavor fiesta, but the beans make me fart, and Jill hates when I eat this. See, every time I indulge in one of those Sonoran beauties, it's like a symphony of flavors in my mouth. But then, a few hours later, it's like a symphony of, uh, well, let's just say it's not music to anyone's ears if you catch my drift. Stinky air drift. Look, folks, life's too short to let a little gas get in the way of enjoying a good hot dog. And let me tell you, the Sonoran style is worth every toot, I mean bite. Sonoran hot dog? Who would even invented these? Wrapped in bacon, loaded with beans and salsa. That sounds like a recipe for disaster, if you ask me. None of that bean-filled jalapeno nonsense. This is crap. Bacon wrapped and loaded with flavor. What's not to love? This is a southwestern delight in sandwich form. I love some beans with my dog. All right, this Sonoran shit gets D tier. It's awful, but the relief you get from eating this as an instant toot reliver saves it from trash tier. Nothing like the pleasure of feeling, feeling warm air squeeze through my ass cheeks. Toot, toot, and goodbye, folks. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies, and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos and consider joining the group membership. 
so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke. We work on 100 percent commission. But our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some real deal closers. Another thing, we also have a full tutorial for people who want to make faceless AI videos and the link to access that knowledge is in the description. The power is in the people. Have a great night. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This time, the presidential brokies will be making a horror movie slasher tier list. Comment what video idea you want to see next. The rankings go from S tier to trash tier, with S tier being the highest and trash tier being the lowest. No shit. Quiet, give that like and subscribe button a bump for me and click the bell notification if you are subscribed because not too many subscribers actually get notified of our videos. All right, team, let's dive into Michael Myers. Thoughts? Michael Myers, is that the guy from Austin Powers? No Donnie, you old ass motherfucker. Oh, no, no, right, this guy Mike doesn't scare me. He looks like Kiss. Kiss doesn't scare you? And he's got the fashion sense of a mechanic. What's with the jumpsuit, Mike? Yeah, but you've got to admit, his dedication to walking everywhere is impressive. The guy's got stamina. True, he's the ultimate lurker. Peeking around corners should be an Olympic sport for him. Michael Myers gets a B tier, relentless, but could use a wardrobe update. He's not scaring anyone anymore with that $2 wish mask. Next up, Freddy Krueger. Ah, uh, Freddy, the man of my dreams, literally. That's funny, Trump. Didn't know you was gay. That joke flew right over your head, Obama. Only guy I know who can make a striped sweater look terrifying. And those claws, he must be a nightmare at manicures. Yeah, but his pun game is strong. A comedian and a slasher talent. I do love a good pun. Grow up. Freddy scores an A tier. Terrifyingly funny with a questionable fashion choice. Now, Pennywise the Clown. Pennywise makes me rethink every birthday party I've ever been to. Right? Who knew balloons could be so menacing? And that dance, a viral sensation for all the wrong reasons. His dental plan is definitely lacking, though, those teeth. Never been one for clowns. Pennywise gets an A tier for me, creepy with a side of dance moves. How about the nun? The nun took my fear of detention to a whole new level. Yeah, she's like the hall monitor from hell. Her staring game is top notch. First place in the creepy stare Olympics. Makes me want to carry holy water instead of pepper spray. You have a secret security detail. Why do you have pepper spray? Because they'll never expect a guy so dumb. The nun scores a C tier for being a virgin. Not very terrifying. Holy terror with a petrifying gaze. Let's tackle Jason Voorhees. Jason makes me never want to go camping, like ever. He's got that silent but deadly vibe, literally. In the mask, ultimate COVID fashion before it was a thing. His relationship with water is complicated, though. Just like your relationship with children. What? No, it's quite simple. I love them. Jason gets an A. Tear silent but deadly with a questionable choice of vacation spots. Next, Leatherface. Leatherface brings home decor to a whole new level, not in a good way. The guy's a walking health code violation. And talk about family issues. Makes yours seem normal. His choice of mass is creative. Let's just say I'm not a fan. Leatherface scores a C, tier. He needs a lesson in hygiene and interior decorating. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal makes me think twice about accepting dinner invitations. He's got that creepy intellectual vibe, like I'm smart, but I might eat you. Definitely wins the award for most likely to ruin appetites. His taste in wine is impeccable, though. Pity about the food pairing. His character reminds me of Joe a little bit. Not sure what it is. Probably the age thing. Well I'm not that old, I'm only 81 years of age. 81 years, young mate. Hannibal gets a trash tier, sophisticated, but with a questionable diet. And he's not even really a slasher, he's just really creepy. Jack Torrance. Jack's the reason I avoid winter vacation. Talk about cabin fever, the guy takes it to a whole new level. And his typing skills, all work and no play. Makes you appreciate a good door lock, doesn't it? Jack scores a B tier, a chilling reminder to take a break. Lastly, the Babadook. The Babadook made me donate all my pop-up books. He's like the boogeyman with a better PR agent. And that outfit, Fashionably dark or just thrift shop gone wrong? At least he's living proof that hats are making a comeback. The Babadook gets an S tier, stylishly terrifying with a penchant for drama. This was a great debate amongst the three presidential brokies and we thank you all for watching. Hit that bell notification so you can see when we drop new videos and consider joining the group membership so that you can vote on polls and what direction the channel will go in. Also, if you didn't know, we are real estate agents in New Jersey and New York states. That's why we're so broke. We work on 100% commission. But our contact info is in the description as well in case someone wants to work with some real deal closers. Another thing, we also have a full tutorial for people who want to make faceless AI videos, and the link to access that knowledge is in the description. The power is in the people. Have a great night.